Hey friends, what's up? It's your girl T Two Times, and I guess I'm gonna talk to the people on the Shy versus Everybody podcast. Shout out for everybody podcast episode 61. We doing this shit a second time because my producer fucked up. But we got a uh, special guest in the building. You know what I'm saying? Radio personality, DJ, voice talent. You know what I'm saying? We got T2 times. What up, though? What's cracking for a second time? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, players fuck up. You know it what I'm saying? It's like that sometimes. Yeah. So, but you know. Yeah, it's but all you good. You know, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Everything good. Our voice going cool, up and cool, down. Cool, cool, cool. Hell yeah. So, we all good. We all good. So, like I said before, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do a salute me while I'm here because a lot of times we wait for people to pass away. You know what I'm saying? Of course, be on Facebook saying how much they love them and stuff. Mm -hmm. When, especially with dudes, if dudes got to feel like they too tough to tell another dude they love them and stuff like that. Or, you know what I'm saying? How they feel. So, we try to give people their flowers while they can still smell them and while they can receive those, you know what I'm saying, good words. So, uh, I'm going to start off. Oh, yeah, but no mom, no dad, no brother, no sisters, no kids. Got to be outside that box because it's always the easy people to go to. Mm -hmm. So, mine's going to be, you know what I'm saying, people with parents and stuff because, you know, a lot of times we take having parents or just having people around, you know what I'm saying, for granted. Especially your mom and dad because, you you know what I'm saying, once they gone, there's no coming back. Right. And uh, today, my, uh, my pop's birthday. Whatever, he been passed away for what, 21 years. He died June 13th, 2000. I found out on my way to my eighth grade graduation. Oh, and I'm like, damn, mom, why you couldn't tell me I did this shit? Like, on the way? <laughs> yeah, so I'm at graduation trying to. I, I ain't cry though. I ain't cry until uh, I saw him in the casket doing the funeral because mm -hmm. my dad was sick for like a year and a half. Like, he had a stroke and he basically was a vegetable. Uh -huh. So, like, I was happy because, like, I could just see. You can see pain in somebody's face without them even being, you know what I'm saying, able to show signs of emotions. Because mm -hmm. you're just sitting there, everybody coming to visit you for a whole year and a half, like, I wouldn't want to do that shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying, I'm just saluting people with parents. If you got something going on, make sure, you know what I'm saying, you squash that shit. Is your mom and dad, you know what I'm saying, ain't no point of holding no nothing against them because, shit, they brought you in this motherfucker. They so, did. So, you know what I'm saying, so my, that's my salute to people with parents. What's yours again? <laughs> <laughs> You my uh, nigga though, dog. <laughs> I, I second your uh, people with parents, and then um, I want to salute teachers. Okay. Uh, like I said last time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know the point is, teachers catch a lot of flack. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's such an important job. Yeah. And I think that people just don't give teachers the amount of credit they deserve. We don't get the amount of money we deserve oh, no, considering no. the impact on the world that we have. I'm a teacher myself. Okay. First year. Oh, yeah. In a struggle. Yeah, for sure. In the virtual ass struggle. Oh, see, so you haven't been um, back in class yet? Still everything? No. Is... Okay. And my students ask me every day, can we go in? When are we going back to school? Listen. Yeah. Okay. It's a it's so much to do. It's a lot of mental labor. It's a lot of emotional labor. It's a lot of physical labor. Being a teacher is a lot. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people upset right now because not enough teachers want to be back in the classroom. But it's just like, think about yeah. how much of an emotional toll just being alive during a pandemic. Oh, yeah. Is. Hell, yeah. It's crazy. And then you want me to go and, and, and risk my life because your kids, they... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It's oh, yeah, hard. For sure. And so everybody that's in the classroom in front of somebody's kids helping out in the school right now, like, I salute you because oh, yeah. it's, it's a tough job, but somebody got to do it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, for sure. Because like I'm saying, my four-year-old, this is first year in school, you know what I'm saying, he in preschool and stuff, and this is what he think is regular. He just started going to, you know what I'm saying, in-person school because his mom, my, my wife is a uh, teacher mm -hmm. for pre-K. So, um, you know what I'm saying, they back into the school. So it's scary because you don't know, like, you don't know what to do during this situation with this pandemic. Like, no. you you scared. I just went to the store, got some motherfucking hood pizza, and motherfuckers walking in that boy, no mask on. Like, damn, cuz. It's so wild. <laughs> like, you don't, care about, you don't care about the wrong Like, dog, like, for real, None for real. None of it. Now, you say you a teacher and stuff. I want to ask you this because, you know what I'm saying, you young. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm quite sure, you know what I'm saying, boys probably think you're attractive and stuff and probably got a little crush on you. Do you remember the first teacher you had a crush on? Oh. Or if you did? Because I, mine was Miss Hope. Miss Tanya Hope, first grade. I don't think I had a crush, mm -hmm. but I did used to think that like my ninth grade algebra teacher was fine. Yeah. This white man named Mr. Polk. Mr. Okay. Polk is fine. Yeah. Like, everybody used to be like, y'all, Mr. Polk fine. And we like, right, he fine. 
<laughs> but like, I don't know. It never went beyond that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, for I sure. Never, hell no, hell no. But I don't. So the thing about it is, because I don't feel comfortable making my students be on camera. Oh, yeah, for, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on in their house. Yeah, you don't want to see no crazy um, junk. It's, but it, you know. Parents don't know how to act behind the camera, yelling, parents, cussing. Parents don't know how to act behind the camera. You got, um, you don't know what people's living situation yeah, is like. You don't yeah. know how many people in their house. I heard that one of my students is homeless. Yeah, you know damn, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, you don't, you never know what somebody's situation is. So, I don't feel comfortable making my students be on camera. Yeah. And because I don't feel making them, I don't feel comfortable making them be on camera, I'm not always on camera. Okay. Um, and so they see me sometimes. Mm. So like the only way they really know what I look like is if they like didn't follow me on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> and I pray that yeah. they have not found me. On oh yeah, Instagram. yeah, yeah. Talking reckless in that boy, Please, huh? Please, no. Oh yeah, for sure. Please. My yeah, like I said, my first crush as a teacher was Miss Hope. She was my first grade teacher, and I remember I used to give her a Valentine's every year from first grade to sixth grade. Like, I made sure, like, my mom, I, I, I got I to gotta give Miss Hope something. And I remember one time she was, um, you know how it, how it was back then when you bring the uh, TV to the classroom? And mm -hmm. you know it's about to be, a, either you about to either enjoy this movie or you going to go to sleep. Either or, <laughs> you was about to be like, damn, this is dope. I can either, you know what I'm saying, enjoy a movie or fall asleep. So one day we watching a movie and stuff. I forget what movie it was, but I see her kissing Will. Will was the janitor. That was her boyfriend. Oh, Nigga, no. that, shit, that shit broke my heart, though. Like, okay. <laughs> that fucked me all up. Like, damn, Will? I'm in fucking first grade, all six years old. Like, what the fuck? She going she ain't gonna want my dumb ass. But at that time, I wanted to cry. I was, I was a little upset, Miss Hope, man. Yeah. So yeah, it was my first crush. Like it's that. all good. It's all good. But uh, let's just get you know before we get to you know saying your career and what you do. Uh, explain to me a little bit how it was growing up. Who was in the household and uh, where you where you from? East, West, Detroit, suburbs. So this how people be feeling when I be all in their business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hell okay. yeah. Because I really be in people's business. Oh, you got like, How many kids you got? You got kids? How many, <laughs> how many baby mamas you got? Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> it's all okay. So, this is what it feel like. All right. Um, grew up. <laughs> so I'm, I'm from, like, the whole west side. Okay. I grew up off school craft. Then I lived over off Joy Road for a minute. Then I lived over off... Uh, Plymouth and Evergreen for a minute. Now I'm back off school, crash. <laughs> so um, it was cool. I mean, it's, it's always just been me and my mama. Okay. That's my road dog. Like mm. I was like road dog. Mm. I'm four years old at every because my mom was a teacher. Okay. So I'm at every DFT meeting, every church meeting, every <laughs> usher board meeting. Yeah, you there. Um, I was there, yeah. and so she kept me like in. In addition to her being busy, she kept me really busy. For sure. So I did. Dancing, I ice skated competitively for years. Mm -hmm. uh, I did cheerleading for a couple years, marching band, all type of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I really appreciate that because it it gave me something to do. I'm my only child. Yeah, for sure. I have siblings on my father's side, mm -hmm. um, but they older than me, and we didn't grow up together. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a dog for a long ass time. <laughs> I love my little dog. Her name was Diamond. Damn. And um, I got her in first grade, and yeah. I had her. She passed away like right before I came back home from college. Yeah. Oh, she was around for a minute. Diamond was old yeah. as hell. Hell, hell yeah. Smart. That's the piece of my dog Tyson. Stuff, like, See, you know, yeah. baby sad. Yeah, yeah. I was I was a little heartbroken by Tyson but, passing away. Um. She used to do stuff like climb up on the table, open up bags of chips and shit. Like, no. <laughs> yo. Man. I remember the worst shit I did my dog by mistake. I was frying chicken and, and, and wasted a little grease on her. <laughs> like, I felt bad as hell. Like, damn, I ain't fucked up. Like, <laughs> you know how you get that grease and you you ain't got the tums to, the tums to pick it up. So I used to fork. I used to fork that must fell back down, splattered grease all on her back. Oh, my God. But she was cool, though. She Cruelty. Yeah, she cried a little bit, but she was cool, though. <laughs> she probably wasn't. Yeah, she probably wasn't. But, but you didn't know because dogs don't speak English. I know. I mean, I'm going to rub her back with, <laughs> with a cold rag. Like, damn, I'm sorry, Tyson. Yeah, rest in peace, Tyson, man. I, I miss you and I love you, Tyson. Lord have mercy. Tyson's my dog. <laughs> so you say uh, just you and moms. Yeah. Um, you had us uh, siblings, but, you know what I'm saying, of course, y'all had that connection, like, you know what I'm saying, because y'all ain't stayed together and they we older. We close now, though. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's how I be. Like, them my niggas. Yeah. So uh, as far as, like, what about you, your relationship with your pops? How was that? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean we cool, I guess. Okay, okay, okay. I don't, I don't really fuck with them like that, but mm. I do my best not to... Uh, now, yeah. we as I get older, okay. Uh, 
Not to talk bad about them. Yeah. Because what I realized about parents is like they was people just trying to figure it the fuck out too. For sure, for sure. Right? And so they've been through some shit mm-hmm. and they before I got here mm-hmm. times. Yeah. And um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That affects the way that they parent. Yeah. And so like knowing some stuff about my dad's like childhood story. Mm-hmm. I understand people be a little fucked up and then it's a choice, Mm -hmm. you know, how you deal with that as an adult so that you don't continue to operate like from that sick, hurt, fucked up place. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know what I'm saying? I forgive him for whatever I felt like he did wrong to me. Okay. And I don't got no beef. For sure. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, tell me, because, you know, a lot of times we talk about music on this show and you in the radio game and stuff, so you deal with music. What were some things that you was liking from what your mom was playing at the crib, like when she was cleaning up, cooking? What was the music that you took on and was loving because of her? And not because of you, just because you heard moms listen to it. Um, so my mom wasn't a really big music head. She okay. would sing, yeah, but, like, she never really, like, play music all the time yeah um but for us we would take a lot of trips down south because that's where our family is from Mm -hmm. and so like my best like music memories with my mama yeah are like to mary j blige was the 411 yeah for sure i know the whole album front to back back to front every run yeah because riding in a car for 12 hours (laughs) yeah for sure with a a a six-year-old and a dog yeah you know what i'm saying saying? (laughs) ass in the back barking throwing up and shit (laughs) 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 but like that was the we wore that tape out and see that's that's funny you say that because i always ask people that question what's a song or a cd that just bring back memories Every time you hear it, would it be that? Yes, the whole What's the Four One One. Yeah. What about what's the song or a CD as you, as being an adult that you remember to take you back? Like, my mom was drooping out 400 degrees because, like I tell everybody, that was like my introduction to rap for real. Uh-huh. Before that, I was listening to like little kid music and stuff, but that was like, damn, this is what I rap about? And then that's when I went back and started listening to older music. What was it for you when you got older, that uh, CD or, or a song? Uh, I think about like my time in college mm. and like Travis Porter. Yeah, Travis Porter, goddamn. <laughs> Baby, Travis Porter had Harvard University on lock. Man, we they came to visit one time. Yeah, like the bone alley went crazy. Like it was a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think like all Travis Porter records, like the the. Travis Porter was a group, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that shit was confusing yeah, to people. Yeah, so like the... Tw- it was. <laughs> yeah. Like, so which one of y'all... Is Travis Porter. Is Travis. Or are you Travis and you Porter. Porter. <laughs> yeah. All three of y'all? Yeah. Like, what's up? So, yeah, um, that, like, all... Like, his music really was like, oh, shit, it's other people. Like, Detroit is, is just a part of the country. Mm-hmm. And that was really, like, when I got to know so many people from mm-hmm. all over the country, all over the world. Hell, yeah. And, um... Good time. Hell yeah, we gonna get on that. We gonna get on that. But you know, in high school, you went to Cast Tech. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So tell me how it was. Like <laughs> he went to King and shit. <laughs> so like I wanted to go to Cast. I mean, a- I wanted to go to King. I didn't want to go to Cast. Hell no, my brother went to Cast. You but- wanted to go to Cast. It's okay. No, no, no. Um, we all make mistakes, and I like I really. It's okay. <laughs> and I, you know, what I'm saying I don't fault you yeah. for yeah. not attending. Yeah. Um. At least you get to experience it through me. You know what I'm saying? And the rest <laughs> of the cast technicians. For I sure. Yeah, my brother went to cast and yeah, shit back yeah, in the day. Exactly. Yeah. A cast technician has touched your lives in many ways, than, in more ways than one. And I'm sure <laughs> that you will be changed in some way by the heart. You know what I'm saying? After sure. I leave. It's all good. It's all good. For sure. Um, so so how was you as a student? How was you as a student? What did you do? Well, were you in the sports? Like, what, how was you? Uh, as a student? T, T, and, T and cast tech. Um... I was quiet. Mm-hmm. I would consider myself. I don't know if I was a lame. I guess I was. I was <laughs> like popular, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But I was in a marching band. Okay. And so I was a majorette. Okay. I tore a baton for all four years. Mm-hmm. Became captain, band president, all mm-hmm. type of stuff. I was in National Honor Society. I think I was in like the recycling club. All type yeah. of shit that look good on your college. Hell yeah, on your resume. Like on your yeah. college. Yeah, 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 yeah. On your college application. I was in all that shit. Yeah. All little smart nigga shit. Damn, I wish I would have did that shit. We was in there. I wish um, I- <laughs> AP classes, Damn. you know, I was all that good stuff. <laughs> uh, but it was cool. I I went, I did my homework. I encouraged others to do their homework. Yeah, I was lame. Yeah. yeah. What would you? What would you? What, what would you? you left that boy. Uh, I graduated top five percent. I wouldn't say like I had a three. I need you as a friend. Three seven nine. I something wish. Like that. My jump was like uh. My overall, my first two years will save me for, to graduate on time. My overall probably like a one eight. 
I just didn't give a damn. Because what? All right, I went to a suburban school, Gross Point North, and um, I ain't had no friends because, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm majestic to an all-white school. Uh -huh. So I'm doing my stuff to stay on the basketball team. But when I went to Southeastern, and I started seeing those little black girls and stuff, like, you know what? Like, my whole focus was girls, mm -hmm. make sure I'm, I'm fresh to, to uh, in school, and my braids was crispy. Okay. And I break with the class. Like, me and Reg was fucking up. We probably went to one class. Matter of fact, Miss Roddy. Miss Roddy was a professor at Wayne State, and she taught uh, English. Um, and I know we had to pass. Like, you had to have four years of English, so I went to her class every day. Mm -hmm. But all the other classes, I just said, forget it. Thank, thank you, Miss Hawkins. You helped me graduate because my African-American teacher didn't want to pass me because I didn't go to know her class in the first hour. Mm -hmm. And we, we both bed there, and my last day before I to graduate before graduating, I had to do thirty assignments and take a final to graduate. Hell yeah! So, cause my students <laughs> on the basketball team, yeah. they're like, "Can I please like? Can I just nigga? You ain't turned in shit all semester. Yeah, I ain't seen you at all. And all yeah. semester, and we had this same exact can I please conversation last card market. Yeah. So the answer is gonna be no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but see, it, see, but that's, your eligibility. But that's what that's what that's I what kept me you. up. I played basketball my first two years, and it made I made my grade. I made sure my grades was good. Those last two years when I went to Detroit Public School, they already had their hoop squad. I didn't make the team, so I kind of said fuck it, uh, and that's what happened. It'd but be like that. but then looking back now, I be on my son heavy, my son under road student, all good. I be on to make sure I tell him I show him my transcripts. Like look how dumb I was on. The type, what type of time I was on and don't do the same shit because you're going to regret it when you get older. I think the thing that people like high school students don't appreciate while they're in high school is the fact that going somewhere every day and doing what somebody asks of you is practice for real life. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, it's practice for real life. Uh-huh. Hold on. Hell yeah, she's got a, a, a test message um, on a, um, <laughs> okay, but no, it is, it is though, because you gotta get adjusted to being on time, being somewhere, and uh, and following rules. And if you can't do that shit, not even just like the corporate America world, but just playing sports. If you fuck around and 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 miss practice or late for practice or you ain't about to play basketball, you ain't about to play on that team. Or if you fuck around working, you late for work. That's what your ass gonna be fired in the motherfucking that's build. That's what I be trying to tell them. Yeah. Like I mean, you go to work. If you don't do your job, you don't do your job because it's hard. You're not gonna get the money. Yeah. Like I don't know what else to tell you. So if you come to class and you don't do the work, you don't get no grade. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I don't know what. Else but to then tell a you. lot of times, like for some people. When, you know, of course, co college ain't for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my dog, uh, Verdict and shit. <laughs> but, um, I love him. Yeah, that's my that's dog. My that's my dog. That's my dog. Shout out to Verdict, man. You should be rapping still, too, man. You on some bullshit. But, uh, yeah, sometimes college ain't for everybody, and that's okay. But, di di but that's when you got to start thinking about things that I should have been thinking about, like maybe a trade or some other shit that you need to do. You know what I'm saying? Don't just be like, all right, well, fuck college, but I ain't got no plan. And that's how I was. I'm like, I went to school for a couple of days, and I said, "Fuck it." Had my son on the way, and shit. Didn't have a plan until I got older and shit. Mm. So shit, that's how I was. Yeah, that's how we trying to tell them. I'm like, when I think one of my students got twins. Yeah. Damn. And uh, Damn. I'm like, <laughs> Damn. I'm like, my nigga, you uh, so do a whole. You want to be an example, parent, or, like, or like, how do you want to play this? Motherfuckers ain't he got was twins. Like, I mean, what he tell me? He said like his daddy. Got a whole bunch of kids and some shit. And I'm like, like, so do you want to do the same thing or do you want to be better? Like, that's really, that's really what it comes God down to. God damn, man, man got twins about it. trying to pass your class. Do? <laughs> he, he don't, he comes sometimes. Yeah, that's And I appreciate the fact wild. that he show up sometimes. He be late, his shit always come off mute. He be like, oh, he like, he like, I'm out in the streets. Man, and that's fucked up. That's why. All I was, right. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's <laughs> fucked up. That's why I'm like these kids. I know we was probably fucked up as kids, and you were probably fucked up as a kid. And our parents, but this generation right now, man, these boy, these kids is fucked up. Like I'll be like, dog, what the fuck do y'all be fucking thinking for real? Like, man, I'd be, I'd be on my son's head heavy just seeing how dumb these motherfuckers, these little kids be, man. And I ain't trying to use dumb and motherfuckers and kids at the same time, but that's what it be like and shit. No, so, dead ass. So you went to CAS, you graduated, you were super smart and shit. Mm -hmm. You went to uh to um to a black college. Mm -hmm. and you went to Howard. Mm -hmm. So tell me how 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 was that and was Amazing. going to a HBCU always your first choice? No. Talk to me. So I actually had zero intentions on going to Howard at all. Yeah. It wasn't even on the list. Damn, like, what, what was your what was your list before you chose that school? Uh my list was Purdue. Okay. Period. That was it. That was it. That was the only place I wanted to go. What well, made that school so, so like special at the time then? Uh. Oh, she already know. My friends oh, there. I was about to say boyfriend. That's how most of the time you know what I'm saying. I know how I am. 
ain't never did shit on that. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. So Purdue was on the list, but you chose but, Howard. Yeah, it was Purdue. And so I went. How did I end up going to Howard? Okay. So, there was this trip every year called the Escape to Capstone trip, which, unfortunately, Howard doesn't get to do anymore. I hate it. Yeah. But, um, basically, for a weekend, okay. they would take high school students from all over the city, Southfield, whatever, mm-hmm. and allow them to spend the weekend on campus okay. as college students. So, like, we stayed with college students. We mm-hmm. went to classes with them. Mm-hmm. We went to um, the cafeteria, we went to parties, yeah. we did all that shit. We sure. were college students for the weekend, yeah, yeah. right? And so, um, all my friends was talking about that, like, yeah, we going on the castle. I was like, what the fuck is that? I want to go. Yeah. But in order to go on a trip, you had to have applied to Howard. Okay. And so I'm like, all right, let me send this little application in, whatever. This, yeah, just to go on a trip. Use, oh, I think you, no, U of M wasn't on the list. Okay. It wasn't. I actually, they wanted, U of M wanted to give me a full ride. Yeah. And I did not want to go there so bad. I didn't even finish my application. Yeah. They yeah. was like, can you please just send us this one piece of paper? Yeah. And I was like, actually, no. <laughs> yeah. you guys. And so, um, so we go on the little capstone trip. It was the worst shit ever. Our yeah. bus broke down. Damn. Um, I didn't really feel like, Anybody was like cool. With me. I felt isolated. Yeah. Um, I was staying in a dorm that was off campus, so I didn't. I didn't get to be around everybody yeah, yeah, else. Sure. I didn't understand. Like I was just like, mm, I hate this. <laughs> yeah. This is trash. The school is trash. And it was right after DC had got like two feet of snow. Yeah. So like nothing was open. It was snow every the fuck where. I'm like, well, we just left snow. This is. Yeah, and I'm back into motherfucking more snow. <sighs> I was over it. Yeah. I was like, hell no, I'm not going to. Oh, the one party we went to got like pepper spray. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Fuck it's going to be a no for me, dog. Yeah. And um, so then I applied to Purdue. Okay. I wanted to go and study. Um, I wanted to do pre-pharmacy. So like organic chemistry and something mm-hmm. else. That, that was going to be my major. Okay. Um, And I got my acceptance letter to Purdue. I got my little scholarship package. And I think that the cost of to it, like the yearly cost of attendance, dumb, huh? was fucking right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And they only wanted to give me seven thousand dollars a year. Yeah. And I'm like, but what the hell am I gonna do with that? Yeah, and my for mom sure. was like, girl, uh, I don't know what you finna do. Yeah. You ain't got no college fund. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Let's think of something else. Let <laughs> me figure that out. And I ended up getting my scholarship package from Howard before I got my acceptance letter okay and i'm like oh i guess i got in yeah and they want to give me a full ride yeah my mom was like great that's where you will be attending yeah for sure I was like, oh, okay cool. yeah <laughs> so um i knew people that went there my old majorette captain w- mm. went there and she was a delta and it looked like her life was kind of lit on the internet <laughs> yeah. so I'm like, okay i can i can we can go see what it's about yeah so i got there and absolutely had an amazing time i had never known anything really about pageants yeah before i got there but i ended up competing in a dorm pageant becoming miss quad mm. um I ain't win Miss Red's life. I hated that. But yeah. <laughs> it was what it was. I did um, some time in the marching band. That was cool. They the ones who taught me like how to do college. Yeah, for sure. And I didn't become a band nerd because of uh, my majorette team, Brianna, Kiana, and Tiana. Okay, And damn. so they used to call us the honors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, the honors, like everybody knew that like we was cool. We did our, we did what we supposed to do. But like, sure. we also wasn't band nerds. Like, yeah. We was in the band, but we wasn't band nerds. Yeah, for sure. And, um, it was just really an amazing experience. And yeah. I think so many people talk badly about HBCU experiences because they don't understand the concept of diversity within the diaspora. Mm-hmm. Right? And so when I say the word diaspora, I'm talking about people who have melanin in their skin that okay. live all over the world. Yeah. So not necessarily people from Africa, not necessarily black Americans, mm. but like there is so much diversity in the black experience. You For think sure. about like black people from the Caribbean, black mm. people from London. I met a nigga from Alaska. Yeah, damn. Alaska. Hell yeah. A fucking Alaska. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So like you think about and then you got like black kids from California that never seen snow before. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Or um, black kids from the South that ain't never seen a black squirrel before. Yeah, so, like, all type of, you know what I'm saying? Like, hell that yeah. type of shit. Yeah, they're, for sure. They've never seen black squirrels. Yeah, hell yeah. And so, you think about the difference in the black experience. All I have... But, so many different things. Yeah. Like so, it's Asian students, white students, and so like the black college experience is one that definitely affirms your identity as a black person so that you can go and maneuver in white spaces without 
losing who you are. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. So what, what what would be your advice to a uh, to a senior right now, as far as like choosing a school? Would you tell them not to? I, I guess to choose a black school, but just to look into it. Just just give it a shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look at them because a lot of times people like, oh, black schools don't really. One of my students actually, we had this conversation. He was like, well, like, you don't just really get a good education at black colleges. I'm like, hello, Kamala Harris. Yeah. Is the vice president of the United States. For so sure. She graduated from Howard University. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? yeah. Hell yeah. What you say? Hell yeah. What was it about? So it's just like each school has a specialty. Mm-hmm. And so, when you're considering, like, what you want to do with yourself, which is going to change a gajillion times, I oh, have yeah. a degree in chemistry. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Y'all so, know for sure. Hell yeah. So, just give black colleges a chance. And um, I know sometimes people be are afraid, especially in Detroit, are afraid to leave home. Yeah, I But was there's one, one, like, four hours away. Yeah, yeah. What, in, in Ohio Central. Central, yep. Yeah. Yep. You can go to Central. You can go to Wilberforce. Like, yep. It's right there. Yeah, see, I had the opportunity to go to uh, Tuskegee, man. My uncle had it all set out for me, but I was too scared to leave. Scared? I was too scared to leave. I had my little brother. I'm like, man, I ain't going to leave until, you know what I'm saying? So, I regret it a little bit, but it's a decision I made, so. Yeah, I think that um, a lot of times going away to school allows you to grow. Oh, yeah. In so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Like, it forces you to network and figure out how to meet other people and how to interact with niggas who have never seen you before. Yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? It also teaches you the value of staying connected to your family. Mm -hmm. Like, when you hear and you see your family every day, you don't think about reaching out to them. Because yeah. I'm a bunch of Yeah, yeah, for sure. But when you're away, it's a conscious effort. Yeah. To, like, oh, let me call my mom. I ain't talked to her all yeah. day. Hell oh, yeah. let me call my auntie, see what's going on. That's let me true. call and check on my little cousin. You know what I'm saying? Hell Stuff yeah. like that and so yeah. like this just that distance it encourages so many like life habits yeah and then being a college student really really allows you to like have a free trial at being an adult yeah, yeah, with yeah. Minimal yeah. <laughs> for sure that's the one thing i regret if it if that's the one thing i might I, I, that i regret in life is not taking that not going to school and not taking school serious even though i know it come with motherfucking Owen, motherfucking hella, hella money to. Oh, uh, baby, them niggas are never yeah, that money back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, on, it's on that shit. But I wish I would have had the experience just to be able to talk about, like, how you just talked about going to Howard and how it was something that you didn't want to do but wound up loving it and shit like that. So yes. I wish it was something I could have just experienced. Maybe if I didn't even graduate, just experienced this shit. Yeah, and you know so, what like, saying? I have so many friends who went and didn't graduate. Yeah. But, like, they still had that college experience. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Living with niggas you don't know. Yeah. Paying your own bills, or at least figuring out, like, okay, I am responsible for me eating every day. Oh, for sure. Fuck. You know Hell what I'm yeah. saying? Hell <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember at... Waking oh, up, everything. Sophomore year, that same off-campus dorm that I hated so much as a... Um, as as a high school student, yeah. I lived there. Yeah. I had a dog ass suite, too. We had a little futon and shit. Refrigerator, <laughs> microwave. Honey... It was like a couple weeks. I ate oatmeal every day. Hell yeah. R ramen oatmeal noodles. Oatmeal and ramen noodles. Hell yeah. It was like packs of oatmeal. For sure. Just a lot of oatmeal. Hell yeah. Because Get full. Because my dumb ass, I spent money on what up concert tickets and, and clothes. Yeah. Dumb shit. Hell yeah. But I learned my lesson. Like, yeah. I know how to survive now. Yeah, hell yeah. How to motherfucking manage your oatmeal? money and shit. Hell yeah. <laughs> Kool-Aid motherfucking ramen noodles for sure. So tell me this, like. After you graduated college and stuff, I know we gonna talk about you know what I'm saying you get into the radio and stuff like that and podcasts and stuff. But what what was the first thing you did once you came back home and you got your you know what I'm saying degree and graduated from Howard? Get a fucking job. That what was, was trash? I was like, what job was it? Well, I know it was probably some bullshit. Actually, it wasn't that bad. I worked at Greek Town. Okay. As a dealer. Okay. For so you, a while. Yeah, right um, fresh out of college, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And so. Working at Green Town, it was, a, it was an interesting experience. It definitely made me look at money different. Mm -hmm. Like, I am so unimpressed. <laughs> like, oh, I got a whole bunch of money. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I took that much money from people in like 20 minutes. Go yeah. home somewhere. I remember my worst, quote unquote, worst experience at the casino. Them people hated me. They had just started letting me deal in high limits. Mm -hmm. Like, I finally was good enough at counting, and they was like, all right, cool. We yeah. trust her. Yeah. She can go and um, deal in high limits. Yeah. This man lost $40,000 in 20 minutes. God damn. And he was just looking at me like, ma'am, please get the fuck away from here. I'm like, I'm going home, sir. Yeah. I'm going to go home. Good luck to you. Hell yeah. But, like, probably... now I can look at money and be like, eh. That's a, that's a lot of money. I, I got mad because I remember my first time going to a casino, uh, Greek Town, 
uh, turned 21 and went down there and lost my whole check in like 10 minutes. Like on the on the on the dice table. Now nah, you ain't know what you was doing. Think yeah, thinking it's like some hood shit. Know that it's not the same. Hell thing. yeah, I'm in that bitch putting it uh, two hundred on the field. Like you know what I'm saying, Duh. fucking up, yeah. fucking up. Like damn, craps. Like for real. So I had to yeah. go on my way another two weeks to get a motherfucking paycheck. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna shoot dice in the at the crib. You know what I'm saying? Or in the hood, like cause this whole shit. Uh, I'm good. I don't know how to shoot dice like this. Like, yeah. it's too many eyes. It's too much different shit. You think if a nigga hit a hard ten, you about to make that hundred turn to a thousand? Like. Yeah. It's not that. Hell no, it's not. And that's what be fucking niggas up, dog, for real. Yeah, so I, I came home. I, that's when I started interning at, at Hot. And then I, my mom was like, uh, ma'am, job. Oh, you yeah. You need a job. Hell I was yeah. Like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So. Now, talking about the radio, the one, I don't know if this is your first, with well, your first experience, but 31st and 3rd morning show. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was. No, it wasn't my first experience. It was yeah. my second one. Okay. But, um. Talk about that. Like, how did it come about? And like, how was that? How was that? Yo, be, you know, what I'm saying, be on the morning show. So it was, it was on Worldwide Core. Okay. So it was a it was a satellite show, mm-hmm. and one of my friends who went to Cass mm-hmm. and Howard with me mm-hmm. was one of the calls, and she was like, "See, <laughs> like, you want to come and um, you know, come be on our our show with us?" I'm like, "Okay, yeah. I can be on your show with us." For sure. And I had done. Uh, a show at on WHBC at Howard. Okay. One semester, uh, me and these guys, uh, Alex and the Derek, they they rap. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a show called the pregame. Okay. And it was okay. on Mondays and Fridays, and we called it the pregame to your weekend, your weekend. Yeah. And we in one semester, like we won show of the year. Okay. We like damn the whole year. Hell okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's cute. <laughs> and um, so when I came home, like I was itching to get back into radio again. Like I completely fell in love with it. I had been considering it since my sophomore year of college, but mm. the way my scholarship was set up, they was like, "Uh, bitch, we paying yeah. for four years." Yeah, for sure. So whatever you're going to do, yeah, you, gonna, you better get it done yeah, up in these four yeah. years, yeah. or we won't be doing anything. For sure. And so um, it was. It's so crazy. So Kia, uh, Tiana. Mm. Nana's. And, <laughs> I said Anna's. Right, Nana. yeah. There's another Tiana who I actually used to live with. I love her. Hey, okay. Tiana. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> DJ. So we um we had our little show. It was cool. It was just a, another way to like cut my teeth in the in the industry and yeah. like figure out okay the the booking guests mm-hmm. and choosing topics and you know being relatable yeah. to a completely different audience you yeah, know, yeah. i hadn't been home in four years yeah so i wasn't necessarily tapped into what was going on <laughs> yeah here. for sure yeah um but like that that definitely led me to you know what i'm saying getting more involved going to shit talking yeah. to people yeah yeah and uh, i really appreciate that experience oh, yeah. now we say choosing topics and all that stuff would y'all like kind of doing like current current topics current events or y'all would just kind of like come up with shit as, y- as y'all go both okay both um, coming up with stuff as we went, and then of course talking about stuff that was happening in the city. Yeah. Um, Tiana, Kia, and I, we all have like a, a really like community heart, mm-hmm. um, hearts for service. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, all of us now are in sororities. Kia and I are deltas, okay. and um, Tiana is a SG Row. Okay. And so, like you know, stuff like that, things that could help people, you know, jobs that yeah. are available, for this sure. shit like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you had, now you had a podcast. Was this before thirty first and third or after? After. Now with the podcast and the radio, do you feel like all right? You might like one more because you have, probably got more freedom to talk about what the fuck you want to talk about on the podcast and opposed to being on the radio. Um. And like, and what was your podcast about? Like, was it interviews? So my podcast was called Say It Two Times. Okay. Um, and it's been on hiatus for a year and some change. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the reason why I even ended was really on, like on some fluke shit. I think one of my episodes, I had an issue with audio, and mm. I got so pissed, and I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna take a break. Yeah. And, and then that break was long as hell. Yeah, I'm gonna say still uh, currently. It was like, you know what I'm saying? Like the first break I took was after my mom passed away. Of course. But then the second one, it was after that whole audio shit. I was just yeah. like, you know what? Okay. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. But it was about, so I had been interning or, you know, volunteering at Hot for so long. And I really started the podcast as a way for me to practice for being on yeah, air. Yeah, once you get that, yeah, So, yeah. to get comfortable speaking into a mic, to get comfortable um, coming up with shit to talk about, to get comfortable 
um, DJing. Mm -hmm. So part of my show, I had two like five minute mixes, one at the beginning, one at the end. Yeah. And um, I think I called the mixes like "Get It Two Times" or something. Part okay. one and part two. Yeah, yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah. Little, little quick turn up. Hell yeah. Um, just some quick five minute mixes, just so that niggas knew that I DJ. Yeah, for sure. Because I was, I had, I was still learning and. And stuff like that. So I really did enjoy having my podcast. And it's interesting because so many people continue to bring it up. Yeah. I'm like, y'all was really listening to that shit. So how many episodes you you did? I think I had like 10. Okay. Okay. You had like, you had people coming on? I did. I knew you had so Vertic like on there. I'll yeah, I had Vertic on there. Um, one of my homegirls from Howard after she... Um, was battling breast cancer at 24. Oh, wow. Yeah. We talked about that. And... Um, the last one, like, I had a guest, mm -hmm. and that's when the audio got fucked up, but I was He's like, fuck this, I'm gone. Yeah, I'm like, I'm out. Take a break, it's I see like you. Hell yeah. By the end, I had got hired at the station, so I guess I got comfortable. Yeah. But I I do enjoy um, being on air, because mm -hmm. I have the opportunity to interact with listeners live. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I love taking phone calls. Mm -hmm. We really be on there playing too much. Like, Hell I yeah. play too much. Yeah, yeah, I peek. I peek. Yeah. <laughs> now, Wait, no, what? No, now, November 3rd, 2018, that's when it was official. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You being the voice on Saturdays at 107.5. Uh, so, like, how was that? Like, and you say you've been interning for a long time. Like, what was the wait for you to be on there and have that uh that platform on Saturdays? Four years. Four years. Was yeah. you like? Did you ever be like? We were just talking about this shit before you came about giving up and how it's so easy to be like, fuck this because they ain't coming in the pace that you wanted to come at. So was there a time that you was on the radio intern and you like, man, damn, when the fuck is it gonna be my turn? Yes. Fuck this, I'm good. Mm -hmm. So what 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 kept you doing this shit? Um, the people I was working with. Mm -hmm. So, um, I had I started. Interning at Hot in 2014 mm -hmm. with Bijou Star, a Howard graduate. Mm -hmm. Shout out to <laughs> Um, She let me follow her around, go to all her events, blah, 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 for maybe like a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Met Yonla Van Zandt mm -hmm. and Salt and Pepper. Mm -hmm. And like, I, you know, had a grand old time. Yeah. And then they let her go. Yeah. And she ended up going back to Ohio. So I took kind of a year off. And then DJ Angel Baby came to Detroit. Mm -hmm. DJ Angel Baby is a Howard grad. <laughs> yeah. And she's also a Delta. So yeah. she's my pro fight. And okay. so I called her. Well, prior to her coming here, I had sent her my first air check that I put together myself. Okay. And it was absolutely terrible. And she ripped my shit to shreds. Yeah. To shreds. She said, Terry, you know they don't care about nothing they say about their mouth. They sure. just say whatever they <laughs> mouth. Yeah. And so she had ripped my shit to motherfucking pieces. Okay. I was like, oh. Yeah, fuck you all I up. think maybe I should not do this. Before. Yeah, hell yeah. That shit will fucking make she you think like, about that She was like, your name shit. trash. Because at the time, like, I was going by my, like, Tiana Nicole. She was like, your name trash. <laughs> like, this trash. All this is trash. You trash. Damn. Ma'am. Damn. Like, oh, okay. And you even know her like that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I thought we was cool. Yeah. Um, but, so, after that, it was probably about three years in. She had been here for about like two years at that time, mm -hmm. and I had applied for a job at the station five different times. Yeah, five times. Damn, five different times. And the last time when they didn't even want to hire me as like a receptionist, yeah, I was like, Fuck okay. This. I am through with y'all niggas up in here. Hell yeah, I've been this bitch bust my ass. So, um, Angel had let me, she let me like be part of her entertainment section and she taught me how to run the board like for real mm -hmm. and get good at editing. I already learned how to write. So I knew how to do so much stuff. And I'm just like, why are y'all niggas hiring everybody except me? Yeah. And then recently on Clubhouse, mm -hmm. um, I learned that when they finally did hire me, mm -hmm. it was because they created a position for me because they knew I was going to leave. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So they was like, sure, we yeah. cannot lose T. Yeah, you've been so dedicated. So we need to figure out what we can do for her or she's going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And they was, I was dead the fuck serious. Yeah, hell yeah. Bye. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm out. I'm going to JLB. Yeah. And fuck all you niggas over here. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and so then I didn't have to. And I really appreciated that. They gave me an opportunity. My, I started on praise. Mm -hmm. So that I was doing, that, yeah. um, the gospel show on Sundays Jesus. and then like you know what I'm saying we ratchet on Saturdays and yeah. holding sanctified on Sundays I be. and it was it was cool I, I really appreciated the opportunity to be in two different genres mm -hmm. 
And I also, like, I was practicing to be on um, Kiss, too. Shoot. Mm, yeah. Put me on all this shit. Hell, yeah. Put me, put me on there. For sure. Let me talk to all the people. I want to talk to everybody. Hello? Hell, yeah. And so, Hell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, that's how that ended up. I definitely had moments where I was just like, you know what? Yeah. I'm straight. And even now, like, I am... I really want to do more than just weekends. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You want to be so, on that boy on regular time. Uh, I had the opportunity when BJ left mm-hmm. to do nights. Mm-hmm. And so I was on the radio seven days a week. Mm-hmm. And um, after that, they they syndicated yeah. our nights. And I was just like, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean to tell me I've been doing this shit every fucking day yeah. for the last however many months, mm-hmm. and heard that I was winning. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, number one. Hell yeah. And y'all not gonna let me have a night show? Yeah, for sure. At the artist time? Yeah. Damn. Ooh, y'all want me to leave? Yeah, I Because I'll go. Yeah, I, I got Cause to Because I'll go. Hell yeah. I'll get the fuck off. If that's what y'all want, if you don't let me just say that. Hell yeah. But that's not, that wasn't the case. You know what I'm saying? The business decisions <laughs> were the business. I saw that you look at the cup like. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just checking to see what I had left up in oh, here. Okay, cool. It's, to yeah, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. But I just, um, um, it was it was one of those situations where it's just like, okay, I feel like I'm continually being passed over and I know that it's not because I don't have the talent. Yeah. Um, I think that it's just not been the right opportunity because the opportunity did come up. I did do an interview for a position in uh Richmond, Virginia. Mm-hmm. And I ended up not getting it and I was so hurt by that. Mm-hmm. But then months later the pandemic hit. Yeah. And the girl who got the job that I wanted was fired. Damn. Yeah, so it'll be, yeah, damn, it'll be And fun. she's out of the, you know what I'm saying? She out of radio completely. Yeah. I'm still fucking around on this weekend. Yeah, you still, hell yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm still in the business. I'm still in the company. I still have the opportunity to do what I love doing. Yeah. And so, I'm grateful for all of the doors that haven't opened because it just means that it wasn't the right time Oh, yeah, yet. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because we were just talking about that, man, with this podcast stuff. He been doing it so long, it wasn't even called podcast. Like, and I'm like, so I was asking, like, though, what the fuck made you, like, keep going? And even with me, I know it's a lot of times I might say fuck some shit, but it, with this podcast and shit and with me coaching, like, those two things, I got a passion for it. Mm-hmm. So even if it might be a trash interview or uh, I might, my team might get their ass beat, and, you know, I go back to the drum board and get that shit together. Mm-hmm. So that's how you know you got passion for something when you ain't just quit to, to quit something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you been going at it, so shit, you gonna get that weekday. It's coming. Hell yeah. You That's got- all. Yesterday, I was at the station from 1 p.m. to midnight. Yeah. And I did my like I did my show. I did another show. Mm-hmm. I was pulling audio from my other show. I was just trying to, like, put my air check together, but I was in such the, like, I was in the zone. Yeah, grinding. And I'm like, wow, I haven't felt this way in so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Now, you know what I'm saying? Of course, it was some radio personalities that you was looking at. And this on this show, we do a lot of top three. So, if you had top three radio personalities, who would you who would you have? Here? It could be just in general. Hmm. Okay. Um, can't not say Bushman. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, for like, sure. Hell yeah. Living legend. legend. Hell like, yeah. living legend I remember for seeing sure. him. I used to be in the St. Andrews, seeing him up in that boy. Dog, I called. When I came back home, I called the radio station so fucking much trying to, like, get them to talk to me. Yeah. That I won tickets from Big Greg. Shout out to Big Greg. That's who was texting me. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Big Greg. Um... I won tickets yeah. to go see Wiz Khalifa. And at the Wiz Khalifa concert, I was just like, oh my God, it's Bushman. Yeah. And so I went and took a picture with Bushman. Greg was like, damn, that's how you feel? Yeah. You're taking pictures with, Hell with yeah. the niggas from JLB. Hell yeah, for sure. Um, but so like, you can't never, like, you can't not say Bushman. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think, let's focus on the city. So Bushman okay. for sure. Um, I would say Big Greg for sure. Um, and then for me, it's a tie between Dr. Darius and I will say Angel Baby, even though Angel not from here. Yeah. And here is why. Angel came here and did exactly what the fuck she had to do. Mm-hmm. And she wasn't afraid to teach me. Yeah. Like, Angel taught me how to DJ. Angel taught me how to, like, finesse my breaks. Mm-hmm. She taught me how to control my voice. Mm-hmm. 
she taught me everything that I know. Yeah. So I can't say like she not in my top. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, she yeah. not in my top. But then you think Dr. Darius, that nigga's in everybody fucking pep rally. He been at like, both stations. Like he know how to work the city. He been at both stations yeah. multiple times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he's like never been outside the industry. And now he like partnered up Pistons with, you know and what I'm saying? And All type of shit. Yeah. So him, and it's so many, like so many people that I look up to. He like he's thing. DJ. Oh yeah. That's my dog. He um was coaching me like on the, on a like how to brand myself side, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I grateful for Hell all yeah. of that. There is BJ, y'all niggas. I'm still waiting on y'all, man. We we, we talked. I talked to both of them, dog. Come on through, man. Uh oh. Come holler at your boy, man. Best podcast in the motherfucking city. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you know, I got I got a uh, hold to you, and I peeped you. You was doing uh, T Style Saturdays. Yeah. And I had one of the people you had on there was on my podcast prior. Um. It was a uh, uh, 4G. Uh, 4G Neff. Oh yeah. So yeah, 4G Neff. He had a uh, show. He had a song with uh, Vezo. You told him that you thought that he needed a hook on there, but overall the song was straight. Yeah. What uh, what made you start uh, T Style Saturdays, and who was uh, a guest that you just you you remember like like it stood out from everybody else? So T Style Saturdays started as T Style Thursday okay. when I was doing nights. Yeah. And it was like an homage to the Friday Night Cypher that BJ was doing. Mm-hmm. And because he wasn't on air no more, I felt like there was a gap. Mm-hmm. But because we was in this like random weird new space, we couldn't really do it how we wanted to do it. But I still wanted to offer artists in the city an opportunity to be heard. Mm-hmm. So we was doing it on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I basically, like, niggas had to come on there and spit. Yeah. And because I knew that people would be shy, it was a new thing. Like, I would rap, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so then it turned into a lot of people wanted me to hear their music. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, I had to sh- I got a shout out with my former co-workers at Greektown, Haroon. Mm-hmm. Uh, he remember Black Lagoon. Okay. And um, he was like, you should really do music reviews. And I'm yeah. like, oh. No, I really want to do music reviews. Yeah, yeah, and sure. so, but that's what it turned into. Yeah. And so I really, I really liked the fact that I was able to do that mm. because people are so much more comfortable mm. letting you hear they they music. Yeah, over as opposed free, to rapping. As yeah. opposed to freestyling. Um, but one T style Thursday, a nigga from London got on. Damn. I'm like, yo, yeah. hi, what's like, what, hi, yeah, hey, yeah. Right now? So that was dope. Um, there was, um, I did like a a ladies, like ladies only T Style Saturday. That was really dope. I had Elise King on there. Mm. Um, her new R and B album. We listened to a couple tracks off that. I had Nook and Mosa who just dropped a video mm. um, for they song a little bit. Okay. I had them on there. That was fun. And then I also had Shalmaine the God on. Okay. Um, and just talking to her a little bit and getting to know her as an artist, I think was really dope. Mm. That was a fun one. And then the one that did not save. Yeah. I'm sick. Damn. I'm sick. It was like a marathon when I listened to as many songs as I possibly could. Probably we probably did about twenty songs in that hour. Yeah. Um, had so many people on mm-hmm. and it was so fun. But I let Bossa Nova play in the background. Yeah. Shout out to Cash. Shout out to D. Yeah. Nigga. Damn. For weeks I was fighting back and forth with Instagram, back and forth with Instagram. I had to message. I had to, I'm like, I'm gonna text Angel and see if she could text Cash to see yeah. if she could tell Instagram to, let, to let my video go. Yeah. They finally restored it. Then they like shadow banned it. Nobody mm. could click on it. Nobody could see it. Damn. And then it deleted from my page. But the, I'm like, wow. Damn. That's so crazy. Hell no. Have you ever had one that was kind of like awkward? Like, um, I know you 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 listen to songs, so of course you ain't letting nobody with no trash come on there. Oh uh, no, we really. It, it, <laughs> some days I play like roulette in my inbox. Yeah. And so I just play whatever is in there. Yeah. And last week, was it last week? I don't know. Is he last week or a couple weeks ago? Everybody was in the comments like, "Change this shit." Damn. Turn this was they, off. Was, was they on the live with you? Like the person who nah. was talking. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They wasn't. Yeah, I'm real like, "Ooh, up. you are some bullies." Yeah, yeah. Y'all so, is very mean. People. So, uh, what, what, what? Um, I know you had people send you music and disrespect for that bitch to be played on the radio off rip. Yeah. Yeah, like what? What? I don't you, do that. When motherfuckers do that, what, what's your, what's your, what's, your, what you say to them? Like, listen, I just, I'm working so here, but I can't. They, I'm not the motherfucker they, who, you know, run that shit. As far as getting your shit played on the radio. A lot of times it's that. But a lot of times um, what a lot of people don't think about. Okay. This is a song that I want somebody to play on it. Uh, can you play my song on air? Is your song clean? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Hell if yeah. it's not clean, please leave me alone. Yeah. 
Is it mixed properly? Mm-hmm. Cool. Did anybody besides you and your niggas listen to it before you sent it to me? <laughs> yeah, it's important. Yeah. That's important. Because your niggas gonna always say, oh, yeah, that shit's straight. That shit, that shit fire. That shit was not straight. It's yeah. not fire. <laughs> yeah. That's how it be a lot of times. You need some I'm other people. I'm just trying to get my shit on air. Why? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, yeah. For what? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and the way that the music industry is now... The radio is not your focus, boo. Yeah. It should not be your focus. Uh-huh. You need to be getting your song to these DJs. Mm-hmm. Okay? Please Let respect put, the yeah. DJs. Hell yeah. Please respect the DJs. Like, get your music to the DJs first. See if other people like it besides you and your niggas. Yeah, for sure. Before you try to get it played on the radio. Hell yeah. And then, like, you know what I'm saying? What the, what the YouTube number's doing? Yep. Is it on TikTok? Are people... Fuck, like, do anybody fuck with this song besides you and your niggas? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Why are you yeah. asking me to play it on my radio? You got motherfucker two views and, and a half a like, like, you know. <laughs> like, damn, that bitch didn't fill up. You got one, you got one like in a bad comment. Sir. Damn. Nobody yeah. like this. Hell yeah. But see, even now though, with the radio, the radio ain't how it used to be. Cause you got social media, you got, you know what I'm saying, you got SoundCloud, you got different ways, YouTube. Right. So I don't the radio, radio ain't the end is all, last resort. Yeah, ain't the end all be all for for a breaking artist because you know what I'm saying? For the most part, radio playing the same, you know, not to, you know, down the radio, but they playing the same nine songs, down to 10, 10 songs. But then you got stuff like what you're doing that you can hear different artists and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But like when you listen to like the Breakfast Club or you listen to anything, it's going to be the same thing in rotation. And I think Charlotte may have mentioned it like this one song was on that bitch for at least a year and a half, still in rotation. Like, dog, that bitch need to be out. Yeah, we, they need, play, yeah. we, we, we didn't play some old shit, some, some real old shit. Yeah. And it's cool, like a little throwback every now and then. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Radio, as far as new artists are concerned, it really should be the last resort. Like, mm-hmm. you really need to be in front of these DJs because if, if your shit is going to get played on air, it'll be in a mix show. Yeah, for sure. It'll be in a mix show. Hell you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, when, when I talked to 4 g I did end up playing it. I yeah. played it in my mix mm-hmm. for one of them holidays. Yeah. Because I fucked with the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just like, yo, you, you know what I'm saying? Don't let no nobody else dictate what you do. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Because mm-hmm. him leaving quick, I guess he didn't put, that's why he said he didn't put the hook on. Cause... No, he's, yeah, he said he didn't put the hook on the song because Vezo like, didn't have time. Yeah. And they wanted to do four bars and four bars. I'm yeah. like, nigga, it's your song. Yeah, yeah, for do sure. Do hook your motherfuckers out. Hell yeah. Like, don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't shortchange you and don't minimize the potential for the song because you was waiting on somebody else. Yeah, hell don't yeah. Don't hate on nobody, don't wait on nobody. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah, hell yeah. So what what, what would be your advice for, for up and coming rapper as far as, like, getting their shit out there? Like, what, what would you what would you advise to somebody trying to, you know what I'm saying, get their music heard from, from, from more than just their homies who tell them they okay. shit fire? Because them niggas be lying and they on the same drugs as you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I listened to some shit the other day and I was like, I need to be on set. What drugs was it? Man. Because I am not hearing it. Yeah. I'm not hearing it. You should team up with my mans. He be doing, I don't, if, uh, he, he do side uh, baby uh, videos, uh, Kid L. Oh really? He um he came on the show. He do, oh, I heard about him. Yeah, he do reviews um of like people video every Thursday. Sometimes maybe just audio too. Mm-hmm. Was, and um I think he had hell of on there. Um and he had somebody else. But yeah, that yeah you should uh, yeah that'd be dope if y'all could both review some shit, talk some shit about the songs, so you can you know what I'm saying let people know how you really feel about that bullshit. So, okay, uh, yeah, my kid, face be telling all the people. Yeah. Be, the people be they be like, T, fix your face. <laughs> hey, Kid L, man, holla at, my, at the homie, man, T, two times, so she come do a review with you. That'd be cool. Hell yeah, because he be, too. yeah, he be talking hella shit about stuff. Like, so I'm not all about the like tearing people shit down. Oh, no, I he like gonna tear to it down. Give, but he, <laughs> I like to give constructive criticism. Yeah. Like, okay, hey friend, I ain't like this, but let me tell you why, what I ain't like. Yeah, and how you could probably fix it in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but advice wise, number one. Please get multiple ears on your get get multiple ears on your music. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that wasn't at the studio with mm-hmm. you. Somebody that don't know you like that. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid to reach out to DJs. Do it respectfully. And don't be butthurt if they tell you your shit ass too. That that part. Or don't like, be, saying don't be hating. sensitive. Yeah. Don't be sensitive. This not the industry for that. Mm-hmm. Um But you know what I'm saying? Reach out to the DJs. Mm-hmm. And then don't badger them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you want me to support you and your music? Have you supported me? Have you shown up to an event? Have yeah, you for sure. We yeah, yeah. the motherfucking flyer. Did yeah, you yeah, hell yeah. And, and that's one thing shit. I'm learning too right now with the podcast shit is uh, showing love because you want that shit in return. But back. even if you don't get in return, you know that you know what I'm saying you're doing your part. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, show love, show support. Don't just expect niggas to do that shit for you and you ain't doing that shit for nobody else. Exactly. And then like do like really doing the legwork. Mm-hmm. So networking. Um, I would also advise 
please spend the money on a good engineer. Mm -hmm. Please spend money on somebody really mixing and mastering your shit. Mm -hmm. Please spend the extra couple dollars to have your engineer make that shit clean while you still at the studio. Yeah. So you don't have to go back and be like, oh, no, I ain't got it clean. <laughs> yeah. like, well, what the fuck you want yeah. me to do with it? You got your shit sound like a BET movie and shit. <laughs> you going, motherfucker, you mother lover. Like a whole different voice you in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just, if, if this is really what you want to do, Invest in your shit. Yeah, for sure. Invest in your Hell shit. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. With you being a podcast game, you being a real game, what makes a good and a bad interview? Um, like on both sides. I want to know like, what makes a good interview so what makes a bad. Interviewing is the one thing that I love the most, mm -hmm. right? Because there's so much that you can get to know about a person. And yeah. it really, like when I interview artists, it really shapes how I view their music after oh, that. Oh, I told him that. An interview can make or break you because if you a boring person like I don't want to listen to this motherfucking music, but if you like dog this motherfucker has some some a personality to him, let me see what the fuck he he or she about. Yeah. Just offer interview, you gonna give it a chance. I like, might be trash, but you be like, hey, they was dope though. Right, <laughs> like, that's a nice person. They're a dope a nice person. person. Yeah. Um, so for me, a good interview, um. One, they don't necessarily always have to be funny, mm -hmm. but like, I don't like no dry shit. So yeah, if sure. we can't laugh at least twice, then yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was trash. Well, I think but, you laugh about five times, so we good then. Yeah, we good. <laughs> um, I, I, I like where, where people's personality can shine. Yeah. I like when um, you, you're able as an interviewer, mm -hmm. like when you're able to really get to what you get to what you were trying to get to for sure yeah. you know what i'm saying like as the interviewer you have you are in the driver's seat mm -hmm. and so whatever information it is that you want mm -hmm. you have the like the line of questioning to be able to like get that information out yeah. to me great interviews flow relatively seamlessly mm -hmm. like um when you are switching topics mm. like segues are yeah. real like oh, really yeah. important for, for sure. me i don't yeah. know I, they just make everything flow real well oh yeah, yeah i yeah, think yeah. bad interviews when the artist <laughs> or the interviewee like refuses to answer any questions yeah it's like nigga why did you come yeah oh my god yes go home yeah or you just like go yeah, home yeah, we could i could have texted you this yeah you need and you could have oh, texted yeah. me back you need some artist development or some shit i could type this up and put on the blog yeah Hell okay, yeah. we don't have to do this. Yeah, this for boring. sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, one word answers, yes. Yeah, real. I hate when people be real dry. Yeah. But the way that I am, like my my goal is typically to like warm you up, open you up. I just did um interview with ESTG. Okay, I, I heard his music. Is he from Detroit? No, he, he fuck from, with Detroit people though. He fuck with yeah, Detroit. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, he from Louisville. Okay, yeah, because I heard him in rotation while I was listening to like some Detroit rappers and shit. Yeah, so I think he done did songs with like Babyface. Yeah, he I think PZ. I think you want to say uh, Duck, uh, yeah. Vezo, Sada, mm -hmm. er, whoever. Um, and so when he got on the live, dry as shit. Yeah. I, probably, I think I was his last interview today. Nigga probably had been doing interviews since maybe like noon, <laughs> yeah. and it was five o'clock. You yeah, motherfucker, your so best punchline. <laughs> At this point, the nigga got on there and he like, what up? Oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> you know, I'm real like, damn. And so I'm like, uh-uh. Why you get on here drunk like that? Yeah. And, but by the end of the interview, like, he was smiling and warm and open. And yeah. he, you know what I'm saying? I felt like I had a good understanding of who he was as a person. Yeah. Who he was as an artist. How he moved in the industry. Mm -hmm. And, like, what his plans were. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So, like, shit like that. I even think about... um. I always say, so whenever Angel did interviews and I was there, I always say, me and Angel had interviewed this yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> because, nigga, I held the camera, the fuck? I was there. <laughs> and, yeah. and so, me and Angel had interviewed Dej Love. Okay. And Dej is really quiet. Oh, yeah, you can tell. You She's a nice tell. person. She's really quiet, though. Yeah. And so, I think she had just did an interview with somebody else, and they was like, pulling teeth. Yeah, But oh, shit. with us, yeah. We was in that bitch rolling. Yeah, had hell a yeah. blast. Gotta be. Gotta be. But it's just like that's our per our personality. Yeah. Are very warm and very open. Yeah. And like that. We it's the same. Yeah, that's how I am. For, yeah, for the most part motherfuckers come on here, they they get to talking. We have few like Oh, I call this motherfucker like, dog, that shit wasn't it. <laughs> like, uh, it's a couple of times. But then you be like, because it's my one time. So I'll be like, I'll be looking forward to these Sundays. So I try to pick people who I'll be like, all right, man, this is going to be a dope interview by just, you know, saying people in the page. Come on, I'm on your page and send you on the um, T Style Saturdays and stuff. I'm like, let me inbox her. She probably ain't going to say shit. Then you responded and we said we could talk. I'm like, damn, she about to charge me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to tell her, like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, but no, it was all love, and I, I appreciate you coming, though. So, uh, let me ask you this, though. You being a DJ and you being a, 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 a voice of a radio, do sometimes you feel like you overlooked because you a female? Hell yeah. Yeah. Niggas get away with being mediocre so much. Yeah. But, like, to be a, I think, ooh, even thinking back to, like, when I first got hired, mm -hmm. and they were trying to tell me, like, image-wise, you need to be doing this. Social media-wise, you need to be doing this. Otherwise, like, it's going to be h tough for you. Yeah. And I'm like, but this nigga look like that. Yeah. Sound like this. Yeah. And, 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 and y'all put that motherfucker everywhere. Yeah. Huh? Hell yeah, for sure. Confusion. Hell yeah. <laughs> perplexed yeah i'm not understanding why why it's that way especially being a female dj i feel like there's so much proving of yourself that has to be done mm -hmm. and honestly i think i've reached a point where i'm not interested in proving myself yeah either you fuck with me or you don't or you don't hell yeah and that's cool because mm -hmm. i'm still gonna get paid hell yeah i'm still gonna do my shit nigga the money's hell. still gonna get made hell yeah hell yeah you know what i'm saying and so it's like no t is not in every club in the city mm. hell half the people even know that i'm from here i want to hear y'all like you from detroit <laughs> yeah nigga <laughs> but you know what I'm saying like and it, yeah. it's like that you know what I'm saying it's like that I don't I yeah. understand that I am different mm -hmm. I, I carry myself differently I operate differently yeah cool um, yeah it's cool though and I don't have no issues with that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't mind being different. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, it's for sure. It's all fine, well, and good. Hell and yeah. so I have I have found it to be more difficult as a female. I think that if I was like a nigga, I'd probably like been on. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. niggas get away with way more shit. Hell yeah, I'd be though. But I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to keep doing me yeah, the way that I'm going, doing me pushing. because I know that. My name is on the mouths of people I ain't met. Yeah. And that, like, I'm being brought up in rooms i never been in. Like, I yeah. never knew you before yeah. now. Yeah, for sure. And it was wild to me that you reached out. Like, damn, somebody was watching. Yeah, you know, I peep. I be, you know what I'm saying? Be bring, want to bring people on the best podcast and just talk and chop it up. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And I seen you. And I'm like, damn, she be in that boy live as hell. I be thinking you be having a little sip when you be on the little table. I don't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't. The one, the one, the one that I did, um... Show up tipsy was like the one after they announced <laughs> that Joe and Kamala had won. Yeah, so you Because I get... woke up drinking champagne. Yeah, like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I had my Howard shirt on. Like, it was lit that day. That Saturday was a mess. Do you have a polo on there? Polo for us? I did. Yeah, I just had him on the show uh, last Sunday. I saw. He's man. dope. Yeah, yeah. He funny I... as hell. We was in here cracking up, man. That was funny as hell. That was, he, we was talking uh, some shit. He working hard. Yeah. So I'm I'm interested to see like what what's next for him. What comes? Yeah, because like I told him that song could be a gift for and curse at the same mm -hmm. time. It could be a gift because you got eyes, but now everybody expecting that type of music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's that song was so long ago that he on some whole new shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, tell me this, Detroit. Before we get to our last little stuff, who's some Detroit rappers you rock with? Hmm. Okay. I really love how Babyface Ray sounds. Mm -hmm. I love his sound. I just, just started focusing on him like yesterday. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because like everybody kept telling me to listen to him. I'm like, oh, okay. And so it's not necessarily that like he be talking about shit that I can relate to. None of these niggas talk about shit that I can relate to. <laughs> yeah. Hello, I went to CAS. I graduated with a 3.8. I graduated from Howard Cum Laude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't know what the fuck y'all niggas is talking about. Yeah. Drugs. What is that? I never heard of that. <laughs> but I like how the shit sound. I yeah. like his I like his voice. I like how he sound. Mm -hmm. Um, who else I like? Somebody else I like. Uh, Peasy. Yeah, I started fucking him like two weeks ago. Yeah, I fuck with Peasy. I, I met him the other day. I'm like, okay. Yeah. You a nice person. Yeah. I, thought, I, thought he was gonna be, I thought he was gonna be mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. I thought he was gonna be mean. He wasn't mean. He yeah. Just feel how he feel about shit. And For then, sure. But yeah. He, you know what I'm saying? Come he on, cool. show, cuz. He cool. <laughs> um, who else? Bezo. Every time I'm, every time I run into him in the streets is love, yeah. and I really fuck with that. Like he don't never be fake to me. For sure. You know, sometimes I'm sure he don't know who I am for real, but he yeah. see me all the time. Yeah, I, hey, I know you. It's like, I, I you. <laughs> yeah. like I saw you at this release party, and yeah. I saw you at this release then party, you look and familiar. I'm just seeing you at the shit. And then, like, of course, Cash is my favorite. I love her. Yeah, Cash. Um, does. and just from that's just from you know seeing her up close and personal. Mm -hmm. I've for been sure. to some shows. I be in the way at some shows. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because I be trying to get the angles. Hell yeah. Like, um, going to and doing shows with her and Angel. 
I be really trying to get the angles. And so mm-hmm. it was like one show, nigga. I was really in the way. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Damn, Uga. I was surprised she haven't said that bitch, she cannot come no more. Duh. <laughs> Funny as hell. No, she did. And she did tell me I couldn't come one time because me and Angel be playing too much. Yeah, hell no. But th- she be playing too much too. Yeah, So yeah. I just feel like. Matter of fact, back on Kid L, this motherfucker in love with Cash Dow because he always make videos and shit about her every time. And she round up, we post, and he did a whole song, a video. Really? Everything and she reposted a whole little shit, so he loved her ass. That's nice. <laughs> she cool. Yeah. Um, love cash. So I, yeah, that's that's my people. I'm not okay. gonna lie and say that I be listening to everybody because I just I, I just started just because niggas sound yeah. the same. Oh yeah, that's a fact. What I say that shit all the time. Yeah, I just started doing more research and more listening to Detroit rappers me by me doing a show because I don't want nobody coming on. And I'm like, nigga, I ain't. Yeah, I, I know, know you. What the fuck? You yeah. Talking about? So tell me this though. This is a question. What would 2021 T Tell 2014T as far as like the business and what she should change up or do different. Um, or what she should stay the same doing. Be more consistent. Mm. I think that now I realize the value of consistency mm-hmm. and I don't think that I valued it so much back in 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, like there is no reason why I shouldn't have like 30, 100 episodes yeah. of my podcast. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm sure. saying? Like, yeah, there's yeah. no reason for that. Yeah. Um, I think that there are a lot of things that I started mm. that I did not continue with because I got discouraged. Mm. Just some and of that so, um, yeah, don't, like, not letting, feeling frustrated about something not working in my timeline mm. uh, keep me from doing what the fuck I was doing. For sure. Because you never know who is watching mm. and what benefit it's having for them. And so I just was talking about this last night. Like, I posted it in my stories. Um, when you are going through something, just keep going through it. Yeah. Because you do not know who is watching, how you persevere, whatever it is that you're going through. Mm-hmm. And I... I just had the epiphany that like it's the same as God testing you in front of people, yeah, so that they can see your skills for sure, yeah, like like a motherfucker. See how you can never get, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, this is this is so this is Tiana. Here she go. Now watch, I'm gonna put her under pressure. See what happened? Yeah. Oh, she killed that shit. Yeah, did you? Yeah. All right, now nah, now nah, you see that she know how to work under godly pressure. So that means that whatever kind of pressure you put her under, she gonna kill that shit. Mm-hmm. So go ahead, put her wherever you need to put her because she ready for it. Hell yeah. And so that that type of thing, just like to just keep going. Don't let whatever frustrations um, discourage you. Yeah. And just be, and being consistent. Hell yeah. Stay motivated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I seen a picture you post with Nipsey. That's a motherfucker who motivated me to start this podcast. I tell everybody that shit because we the same age. He probably a, a year or two older. And the effect he had on people as, you know what I'm saying, with so little time on the earth, it's like, damn, he did everything that he could do. Mm-hmm. So, like, why the fuck I can't start this little ass podcast I've been talking about doing to this nigga for a year and a half? Mm-hmm. It's just bullshit. Let me go ahead and get on this shit. Why the fuck I ain't start this clothing line I've been talking about for the kids? Why I'm not coaching? Like, fuck it. Let's do everything. Yeah. And then if it fall, it fall. That's it. <laughs> for That's sure. it. Like, and then the thing about it is, like, the failures don't, when you start over, you start in with the knowledge that you didn't have before. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So what's some shit, what's some, um, the last question I'm going to ask you about the radio and stuff, what's long-term and short-term goals for you? Um, Long-term goal, syndication. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to transition into television. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to teach radio Okay. to people or even, you know what I'm saying, teach radio, teach DJ and something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, short term, y'all need a fucking full time spot. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Hello? Hell yeah, hell Nigga, yeah. put me on five days a week. I like being a teacher, but not that much. Hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, this cool, but hell yeah. the classroom is not for your girl. For sure, for sure. I feel like I can inspire kids some other kind of way. And that was, and I asked God a long time ago, like, what my purpose in this industry was. Mm-hmm. And it was to make connections so that uh, what I got was to make connections that I need to make in order to reach the people that I need to reach. For sure. And so you think about, especially when it comes to kids. I don't know why kids, but my mom did a lot of after school programs and I just saw how it benefited the people. Oh, she yeah. Helped. Hell yeah. And so like being in this industry and being tapped in how I want to be tapped in, like the way I do my interviews, like mm. I do it for the sake of forging friendships. Yeah. Like I don't want to run into you in the street and be like, 
Yeah. Oh right, from oh, that yeah. one. Yeah, you know that one saying? shit. Yeah, hell yeah. From that one shit. So, <laughs> like damn. Like that was cool when we had did that yeah. one girl. <laughs> all right. Like I don't want. I don't like fraudulent connections. Yeah, for sure. And so, like, my goal in this industry is to develop like genuine connections to where the people fuck with me enough to want to fuck with what I'm doing. Yeah. And that is to like inspire somebody's kids. Mm. I've always felt like you do not have to be. Pigeonhole to one thing. Mm -hmm. I've always done this and that and mm -hmm. this and that. Like mm -hmm. even now, yeah. I teach, I DJ, I do radio, I bake. I'm about to start in the cannabis industry. Like I got a lot of shit oh, going yeah. on. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Hell yeah. And I've never been comfortable with just like, oh, I'm just gonna be a pharmacist. Yeah. And that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think that. And sometimes we ask kids like, well, what you want to be when you grow up? And we expect them to choose one thing. Yeah. And so I want them to have yeah, the tools to do shit. whatever yeah. they want to do. Hell yeah. Got figure to. Figure out how to combine this shit. Mm. I haven't figured it out, but you probably can. Yeah, hell yeah. So um, I, I want to start, you know, a program for supplementing their science education because mm. I feel like the sciences get real left behind in the STEM shit. Everybody be like technology, <laughs> engineering, math. But then, like, niggas don't know how to do chemistry. Yeah. I don't want that for yeah, us. Yeah. But, like, I, I want to start it. You know what I'm saying? I want to say, because <laughs> I'm bad. And it's probably just because you ain't like it. Yeah, probably. It's just because you didn't like it. You yeah. didn't like how I was being taught to you, and that's fine. I yeah. get it. My mama man, me at the house doing experience, nigga. We was growing plants. Hell yeah. Okay, we was making volcanoes. For sure. Yeah. We was doing all types of stuff yeah. at home. Yeah. Yeah. My mom's a teacher. Yeah. And science run deep in my family. Yeah. So, I, like, I want to start a program where you could like learn science and then like you could also learn how to engineer music okay. or you can learn science but then you also learn how to DJ yeah. or you can learn science but then you also go into dance classes yeah. you can learn science and then I also have an art studio upstairs you can go paint yeah, hell but yeah. like the people that come and do master classes like I want to be cool with hell of us so he can come and teach my kids how to produce I want to be cool mm -hmm. with Big Sean so he can come and teach my kids like you know what I'm saying how to organize their thoughts yeah. in a way that yeah kind structure of songs and you shit know what yeah. I'm saying? Hell like, yeah. that'd be I want to be cool with Beyonce backup dancers so they can come and teach my you know what I'm saying like yeah. that type of shit yeah. but I know that if this is an industry that I could do it in yeah, I could touch yeah. all them people in that way hell yeah you talking about the cannabis shit that's my, my little brother he into that shit shout out to the classic pothead you know what I'm saying on the IG and shit mm -hmm. he got the clothing line and all that shit so yeah he heavy into that shit too it might be him coming downstairs Hey. Oh no, that's my nigga Juan. Two, two, two G's. What's up, man? How you? Blessing to the two G's. <laughs> How you yeah. doing? Now, uh, let me. Now this one, you know, saying we we get out of the, out of the um out of the the shit we talk about with your career. We get to a little bullshit before we end it off. Oh, okay. It's a little bullshit. It's always funny, you know. We we I talk to dudes and stuff. We talk about you know joke about shit. So I say, yeah, you got a female on today. Let me ask her some questions. So are you currently are you in a relationship? No. All right. When last time you was in love? <laughs> when last time you love somebody? 2014. Okay. Damn, that long? Hell yeah. Damn, that's been a, little, a good seven years and shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, you mind me asking what 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 uh what broke that down? Tore that up? Him. Okay. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Okay, cool, cool. Right, let me ask. Yeah, it was him. Yeah. It was. Now, now outside of your uh, of your mom, when the last time you cried on you cried and shit just for real tears? Yesterday. Oh shit, yeah. Last time I cried was some real shit. I cried my ass off, dog. Every time I see anything with Kobe, bro. Really? I can't hold it. Like, and, and this one motherfucker Why at the does job. Why affect you so deeply? Cause okay, now Michael Jordan is the to me is the goat as uh -huh. far as basketball players. But Kobe was like the first person I like. Damn, this is like my guy. Mm -hmm. Like so, ninety six. I'm like what third grade, and he coming to the NBA. I'm like, damn, this nigga Kobe. He came from high school. So then I begged my mom give me a Kobe jersey. She couldn't find a Kobe jersey. She gave me a Shaq jersey. I was pissed off about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, my little brother got the Kobe jersey. I got fucking Shaq. Like, fuck it. It's Lakers. So I just, like, every time, like, I always I root for Kobe. Like, that was my guy. Mm -hmm. So we was doing a podcast with my dog, Easy Fresh. And afterwards, that's when I found out he died. I wanted to cry in front of these niggas, but I felt like I was too tough. Yeah. Try to wait till I got in the car. <laughs> I was on air at the time. Like, I had to report yeah. that shit. It was very, like, surreal. Yeah, like, like Kobe, like, like. 
and of course, he my favorite player ever. Like, mm-hmm. so when I got home and seen all these interviews, I'm like, fuck, I'm just busting out crying for my my wife, my son. I'm like, hey, get your ass in the room. Don't see me cry. Why <laughs> so, is it that you don't want them to see you cry? I don't know. I guess it's, it's just a man thing or something. I don't know. I don't want my son to see me at, 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 uh, on my, on my sensor side. That's a motherfucking problem. Yeah, but I know. It is. That's but that's why, issue. and you know what, though? I'm, I'm working on that. And I I'm can, glad. And I'm working on because this dude and my brother has said that uh, I'm like, I love somebody, but I don't express it, express it enough. Yeah. So that's the one thing I, I try to work on. So, you know what I'm saying? Hey, 2G's my lady, dog. <laughs> love y'all, man. But that's the thing. I never say that shit because, like, when my brother used to say I'd be like, I love you, nigga. I love you, dog. Mm-hmm. Try to make it sound hard and shit. But it ain't, like my man said, the twins, man, from the um the Connected Experience. It just kind of love you on me. I'm gay. I mean, I want to fuck you. Like, I just, yeah. <laughs> I love you and shit. That's all it is to it. Yeah. So that's why I'm getting, I'm working on that. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't want to be that 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 that, that person or that mm-hmm. typical dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that once people get more comfortable with their emotions and, yeah. like, understanding that vulnerability doesn't mean that you're, like, isolating yeah, yourself. for sure. It's, it's more you, like, really connecting to somebody. Mm-hmm. It'll... We'll, we'll have better people. Yeah, hell yeah. I got, I cried. Two people I cried, I didn't know. I ain't cried. At, like, that, that, I, I shared a tear for Nipsey. Like, damn, that's fucked up because he was doing his thing. But Kobe, I was in that bitch. Like, that was my brother. Mm-hmm. I was in that bitch balling. Like, <laughs> and I think when my mom passed away, it, like, it, it fucked me up because, like, I, I find myself being more emotional now after she passed away uh-huh. than before. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cry about shit. Like, what? Nigga, hell no. Damn, that's fucked up he died. Or, like, <laughs> that's fucked up what happened to a kid. But then you start thinking about, damn, I got kids. Well, that was my kid. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, even when my man passed away, uh, uh, um, um, George Floyd. I'm like, damn, I shouldn't be watching shit at work because I might get teary eyed at work because, like, mm-hmm. damn, he's dying. He's dying on camera in front. Everybody see it. Mm-hmm. So it fucked me up. So now I'll be in my little emotional bag a little bit. That's good. <laughs> so tell me this on some wild shit. Uh oh. The craziest shit you search in Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that shit on the last one, me and Polo. Uh, what was his? His shit was Grannies and Miles was handicapped. Uh. <laughs> Cause it was just, I was just curious to see. It was this one lady who her, I guess she had no feelings in her legs, and she they took out the wheelchair. That shit was just like, like damn, she's just then, but it's getting rocked, and she's just like no movement. Like <laughs> it wasn't that I searched it, <laughs> it just but I had what like was popping up on the sides. Yeah. It was like she male or something. I just wanted to know <laughs> what the fuck was like because the disc could. It's like wait. <laughs> so it's like titties, and it's a dick on there. That's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's wild. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. We. It's funny you say that. We were just talking about this on the show. We were talking about before the show, before the pod was shot. Um, we was talking about how okay, we said two scenarios. Mm-hmm. We ain't, I don't want to touch on the Dwayne Wade shit too hard because you went to the you know, whole corporate life. But if you was a boy transitioning to a girl, mm-hmm. but you like girls, mm-hmm. do that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> explain. Was it like that? So, uh, explain uh, a little better to me. The way I said it was just like if you identify as a, as a woman, but you like women yeah. still, mm-hmm. are you gay or what? Oh, is that's that? what it was, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she would be gay. But, like, why? Because you a dude still. Yeah. You like women, so... Okay, so first of all... Yeah, talk to me. Educate me. The, like, the... The, <laughs> the queer umbrella, right? So, simply being um, a person who has transitioned from male to female, mm-hmm. you are automatically in the queer umbrella, yeah. okay? So, you automatically queer. Yeah. Um. Now... Your gender identity and your sexual preference are different. Like, they're separate entities. Okay. So, I actually, I feel like I know a couple who was like, they both was trans, but they still like each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know where I read that story (laughs) yet, but like, I I heard it somewhere before. But yeah, that's why it's, that's why it's still a thing. Like, your gender identity and your sexual preference, not the same thing. Uh, Okay. And one thing I had a question was, when you're a female that's gay, but talk to a female that looks exactly like a dude with a strap on, why you just didn't mess with that regular penis and that dude? Because (laughs) testosterone make people stupid. Okay. It's like dumbassness (laughs) attached to the Y chromosome. (laughs) I don't think my producer is really rocking with that. That cast (laughs) texture. 
Yeah, because I always wonder. You like, know, if you went to cast, you would be. <laughs> you would know. Because I always wonder, like, it's the, you know the what I'm stupidity saying? is on there. It's like research. Oh shit! It's well, not research, well, you got, but I am <laughs> well, highly got, convinced that is y'all niggas is dumb, but it's, y'all can't help it. Damn! Shots fired at King, motherfucking. No, oh, uh, I know that was at the male species. Oh yeah, wait, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That shit, yeah. Hell yeah, I can be dumb sometimes. But sometimes, are we dumb or are we just sitting here and saying, no, like, dumb. Let, the, let her have what she want to have. Let no, her do what she want to do because no. at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? That's no, how it is, dumb. man. No, yeah. Not all the time. Some yeah. shit. Because some okay. shit, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm going to take my situation for instance. Uh-oh. Like, I talk, I learned from this dude. Okay. Sometimes you just got to sit here and say, yeah, you right. Uh-huh. Just be, and you, she might not be right, but you just got to give her that. You got to give her that. You won. You got it. I hold the L. But in situations other than that, more often than not, men do dumb ass no, shit. Oh yeah, we do dumb shit. Y'all might y'all do shit with more with more uh with more knowledge than us. Like just talk about cheating. We cheat dumb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then when women cheat, cause we can cheat and we can just sit, sleep with a woman and get back with her wife and be like, I love you, baby. Mm-hmm. But when a woman cheats, she emotionally attached to this new nigga, so it's gonna not be different. Always. Really? Really? Cause a lot of women cheat with their feelings. Like they ain't, they ain't, they ain't got tested this dude. I'm just saying it's yeah. not all, that's not always the case, and that ain't the only situation where niggas be dumb. Oh yeah, but, yeah. no, we dumb a lot of shit. We, but there's a lot of shit that sometimes we fake be dumb for. Oh, okay. Just, to, just not have no, no disagreement, no argument, just to make sure the household is cool. Okay. We just go ahead, and be like, give y'all that one, give y'all one for free. I listen. To that. <laughs> so, all right, have a dude. What is the craziest thing a did a dude did to keep you around from leaving him? Threaten to kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> damn, yes. Yeah, I'm about to say, damn, that shit way, that shit way harder than my shit. My shit would just fake cry, like you know, motherfucker. <laughs> you got your better. <laughs> like damn, that motherfucker, you ain't gonna hug me. <laughs> I, mean, I over, I'm over here, my eyes like this, like trying to force the tear out. Like damn, all that shit for nothing. Not like a fool. She ain't test every girl in her motherfucking phone saying this nigga over here crying. <laughs> I'm just over here fake crying just to get your ass back. Have a do have a fake cry for you. Uh, I don't or know. Or he really cries. So he was just, just balling. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I I don't think I've ever had a fake fake cry. Yeah. But. Oh, you thought it, probably, it was real. Or I thought it was real. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I don't normally. I don't know. I ain't never really been in those hey, situations like Hey, that. fellas, man. Don't do the kill yourself thing because uh, that, that shit kind of. I don't know. I just don't. I, I don't. still was like, all right. <laughs> he left a voicemail. Bitch, if you. Honestly. <laughs> I got the night right here tomorrow. <laughs> like, I ain't trying to make fun of this shit, but if that's your way to keep your girl dog, don't do that shit, bro. Because it did not work. Yeah. She still, she still. I took all the knives and left. <laughs> Please be out of the apartment when I come back. Man. I called his mom. No. Hey, your son. Yeah. Um, you might go check on him. No, but that's like, for a female, that gotta be kind of like, dog, when a, you gotta met, really mess with the right guy, cause a motherfucker be crazy enough. You see that shit too many times, motherfucker, and killed the woman, killed herself, killed the woman, killed the kids. Mm-hmm. Like, so you really, I got a daughter now, so I'm thinking about this shit. She only two months old. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm like, you gotta really set an example of the person that she, she, you want her to fall in love with. Mm-hmm. Or it, it could be opposite, but at least you know you did your job. You feel me? Yeah. So a lot of times, like it's kind of harder for y'all, cause y'all can be with a crazy motherfucker who just on on ten, you don't know it, and you did something wrong, came home five minutes late. This nigga and this bitch. Yeah, it's very scary. Hell yeah. Hey, it's keep your head scary. up. <laughs> For real. Cause, hey, hey, and watch who y'all fucking with, man. Don't fuck with this, that nigga who you think that nigga fly shit, but he crazy as fuck. You don't really know his mental, his background. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, for real. Because that's People important. be lying. Like, that you're, oh, hell yeah. you're a representative. That, that person you Always. Your have. job interview person. Man. It's like, nah, how the hell I get caught in this dumb ass shit? Yeah. Get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Abort mission. Yeah. Hey, let me go. I'm out. I'm out. Phone. And then, like, tried to escape the first time. Yeah. Somehow got sucked back in. Then it's like, all right, all right, all right. Hey. Fool me once, nigga. Yeah, shame. <laughs> Fool me. Hey, I forgot how that shit go, but yeah, you fools. Yeah. yeah. Hey, remember we had somebody on the show, though? I can't even, for some reason, that just came to my mind. I don't. I forgot who it was, but even though if I remember, I ain't gonna bring her up. But remember, she said that situation where she moved out of town with a dude, and he like held her hostage, like, and he had like a family or some shit. But he held, oh, fucked no. up her credit, fucked up everything, nigga, like everything. 
Um, yeah. So hey, what? Hey, 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 females, ladies, watch who you fucking with, man. And if you see the careful. first sign of a crazy motherfucker, please watch. Like only yeah. allow a person to Shit. tell you who they Dudes are. Dudes too, time. because me and two jeans, we know two jeans, we know niggas who ain't got hell hostage, dog. <laughs> Not hell hostage. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> Dude, like, I feel a couple niggas out the basement. I feel. Oh <laughs> so yeah, so it, I. If I I ain't gonna um, I ain't gonna put it all on females. If you see a little sound of crazy, Please. he or she they is crazy. actually crazy. Yeah, don't say it's cute or all that. And the thing about it was like <laughs> I ignored all the signs of my dumbass. I ignored them several times. Yeah. And then finally it was like, all right, so how much more dumb yeah. are you gonna be <laughs> in this situation? You gonna be more dumb or a little dumb? Like, like <laughs> we already were like we passed little dumb. Yeah. Little dumb was like back back. Yeah. Back, now we we here. Yeah, yeah, nigga, yeah. You about to get evicted. Yeah, hell yeah. Let me ask you this though. This, you know what I'm saying? Do that make you kind of be like Larry of people you talk to now? Hell yeah. Yeah. God now damn. I'm a player. Yeah. Up. <laughs> hell yeah. Up. Man. I used to care and now I don't. Yeah, god damn. I want to care again. Craig, man, you fucked it up, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wanna. I don't wanna be in the streets like this. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not in the streets. <laughs> hey, bye, bye, bye. Hey, Sean, who was on there? I, I take. I take all my L's in private. Yeah. I take all my L's in private. Okay. I got the last question before I get to my uh, my last uh, segment. The craziest DM you ain't got on your IG. Dick pic. <laughs> we just talk about that. Good morning, dick pic. <laughs> <laughs> Dick pic. It wasn't even no salutation. It was just a dick pic in my phone. Yeah. I'm like, no, what the fuck is this? I'm finna start the OnlyFans with all the unsolicited dick pics I yeah. get. Do not send me your dick because I will put it on the internet. Hey, so you get that shit off then? No. <laughs> okay. But it's a warning. T style. Oh, Don't do she, it. She look a little nice, little chocolate little thing. Let me show this dick. <laughs> dick Davis in the And it wasn't even impressive. <laughs> It was not an impressive pen and it was on like medium. Yeah. Please don't do that. <laughs> How you gonna have your shit on medium to be gone now? Yeah, I'll be telling my son, because my son 14, so you know, this day and age with social media and phones, I'll be telling him like, hey man, don't be a goofy. Like don't don't, do don't cause guess what? You send that motherfucker pick, pick of that piece. It's your out. piece about to flow around the whole school. Everywhere. And, and it, we all gonna know. It, you better hope that boy fully around. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you the phone dick pick. Oh my god! I tell, I tell nephew, nephew. Hey, dog, make sure that thing is ready. <laughs> if it's not camera ready. Don't do make it. Make sure it's strong. Sure it's strong. Hey, like Martin Lawrence said, hey, sometimes niggas shit. We hey, don't, wanna... don't put your face in there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like... No full bodies. Damn. Yeah. Don't put your face in there. Yeah, cause you could deny. It. Like, what kind of that mean? I got birthmark. Hey. Like... <laughs> But honestly, okay, question for y'all. My shit two shades. This is a random. This is a random ass question. My cousin was asking me this the other day. What up? He asked me, he was like, how many bodies until a person is a hoe? Mm -hmm. Bro. You talking about as far as like how we look at a female? Or anybody, yeah. Uh, I think it, is, it depends on what age you are. Yeah. If, you, if you like 20 and you like, shit, about 25, <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's kind of turn off, but you like 40, it's kind of understandable. Yeah, you've you been through some shit. 20s, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My thing is like, I remember, um... I'm married now, so, uh, but uh, I forgot my, my shit at the crib. But my thing is this. I remember one girl was telling me her excuse was college. And she just had, like, a ridiculous amount of bodies. I'm like, damn, like, nigga, you got my shit times three. And she's, like, talking about how wild they got. I mean, it matter. Um, do you go in a situation, should, should, do you believe, like, you should know your partner body count? No. It should be, like, private. I don't, why are we counting it? Ooh, so you wouldn't give a fuck about how many dudes? I mean, how I many I mean dudes? Hopefully ain't no dudes. I would care I mean, about female, how many dudes. Yeah, how I many females your dudes and slept with? Because my thing is, I you shouldn't care, but let me know if it's somebody that I know. That, that I, part. I just want to chime in real quick. I, I don't really have a, a issue with the overall number. Mm -hmm. But if you end up pregnant and you have more than four possibilities... That means you fucking yeah. too many niggas. Oh, yeah, 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 that's a problem. So, yeah, this is, sure. and this so, is what so, I ended up doing. Yeah. I think that's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's and a whole thing. Sure. So, at, it's not the number of bodies that matters. It's who you don't know. We're going to get into how many pregnancies, yeah, how many okay. abortions, I mean, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, how yeah, many that. STDs. Oh, hell yeah. Like, that's yeah. 
the shit that matters. Because I can tell you any number I want to tell you. Yeah. I can literally say any number in the world yeah, yeah, that yeah. I would like to say. No, it for could sure. be too high. Yeah. It could be too low. Like, damn, that's it. Like yeah. <laughs> oh, you had that? Oh, you had the fucking clap? Like. <laughs> <laughs> you know some shit that I can't get rid of like that's oh, yeah. that's the conversation no, and yeah. so I was just like I don't so no when you say like that then yeah that's a I whole different way of looking at it of people Matters. I think once you get to a certain age, you everybody ain't gonna have some experience, especially if you haven't been no, 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 you know, saying committed relationship and stuff like that. Everybody in live life and did their thing. You know what I'm saying? Then you got people like, no, nah, that don't count. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, she's be by me. <laughs> or like, cause, cause if, if we only, you know what I'm saying? We only come to niggas that made me come. Oh, well, then that could be, you know what I'm saying? Like, it. Not, at that point, we just might as well not yeah. even mention no number. No, no, no. My thing is like, like and you don't want to get your feelings hurt, dog. Like, just like you know, what I'm saying, just just keep it. That's like looking through niggas or females' phones. Like, I, that was some young shit. Oh, please don't. My, we are talking about you like a motherfucking dog in the group chat. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, cause so don't look in there. Cause me, you know, I'm. You be stupid enough that you ain't went that bitch. You went to the 2012 when you wasn't even aware. Like, damn, this motherfucker was a freak in 2012. Like, nigga. Oh, man. Like, nigga, I wasn't even around in the picture. Like, motherfucker. So, yeah. My yeah. thing is with that, that made sense, though. Worry about yourself. You know how many, how many abortions you had? Like, damn, cuz. Eight? Like, goddamn. We, so, if I get you pregnant, we in a good relationship. You might not even have this baby. You have so many abortions. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And them STDs, yeah, for real. Check yourself, man. Don't be just, you know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. Keep that shit clean and shit. But no, so we got the last thing we do uh -oh. before the hot moment, drum moment, is a top three. I give you a topic or whatever, and you give me your top three. Give me your top three hood movies. Oh, my gosh. I haven't watched a whole lot of hood movies. All right, give me your top three movies in general. Oh, my gosh. I haven't watched. <laughs> so, um, let's see. What's a hood movie? Like, I saw Plug Love. That's that's super hood. I that's, saw... Yeah, that's, um, I saw what's the one Vezo? Um, you anybody been shitting on? Uh oh, that's what was happening. Yeah, everybody was talking about this shit on social media. I ain't seen it, but everybody said it was trash. Uh oh. Shout out to Vezo, come on, show cuz. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think it was trash. Oh yeah. I didn't like how it ended per se, but mm -hmm. I didn't think it was trash. So it's a little plot twist in so there. So you doing your top three uh, Detroit hood movies in? I but I never seen a whole bunch of hood movies. So like, I know you didn't see Fridays. Oh yeah, that's that kind of Boys in hood. hood. That shit, Mr. Society. Don't miss her movie. Oh, uh, fucking Baby Boy. That shit. Oh, <laughs> okay. So then, <laughs> a Friday. Um, I don't know if I liked Baby Boy like that. It was cool. That was always like a go-to movie whenever you had like a female company. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was always like, you know what she liked this shit. I, I like liked it. Boys in the Hood. And I liked Plug Love. Okay, okay. there I go. Okay, okay. Give me your... I'm bad at picking favorites. Yeah, give me your top three, uh, give me your top three, uh, foods. Tacos. That's, that's the number one answer for everybody. <laughs> Come French on fries. Hell yeah. Hold on. Bag or are you cutting me yourself? That says a lot. I don't give a fuck. Cause them Fry me a potato, nigga. <laughs> <Them> <laughs> Fry that bitch. Fry it. Duh, that homemade <laughs> cup boys be on point. They got to be seasoned well. I love hey, Chipotle I fries. The, that, the waffleness. Oh, like, yeah, I yeah, really yeah, would yeah. like to do a French fry tour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you like me then. Because I go Chipotle. Shit, my house all I spent $50. Oh, I used to work at Chick-fil-A. I used to manage the Chick-fil-A in Somerset. Oh, straight up? Damn, I wish I would knew you back then. <laughs> got, some, <laughs> got some free food. Cause we were just there yesterday. We like, dog, we ain't waiting this line. That shit ridiculous. You gotta hey. get the app. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Because we go to one in Nova, and we sit in that motherfucking line, have a good conversation, watch podcasts and shit. <laughs> Meet yeah. that bitch. Spend $50, dog. We ain't got the motherfucking two liter uh, fucking lemonade. lemonade. <laughs> you gotta get the gallon. Dog, my, my household and my wife's household, we went and we went for them and us, and we spent a hundred ten. No lie. That's easy. That's easy to <laughs> for do. My, for my family, forty five is between forty and sixty dollars because we getting a meal and we getting something for later on because we know we ain't going back for like a month. Yeah. <laughs> so you get like the spicy chicken sandwich yep. and the meal, and then you get like the tenders and shit for you, later. You know something. <laughs> but I'm, I, and you know what? After that, I, after working there, I went vegan. Okay, straight up. Mm hmm Yeah. And it wasn't because. Uh, of the food or nothing like I stand by Chick Fil A like it, yeah. them people they cook that shit in there. Yeah, they is like, good. They be flour and shit <laughs> all over the floor like they really doing that. Yeah, in there. Um, but yeah, that was a cool. Little, but I really do want to do a French fry. Hell yeah, shit. Take me. I, I like love fries. Shit. I like Arby's fry. Like I just want to 
Arby fries, they kind of like, I used to like it, but I don't like it as much no more. I like the, cur the curliness. Yeah, it's going to be straight You know what I'm saying? Though. Like, curly, you got waffle. Wendy's fries good when they hot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, first person I heard say that. When they hot? The look at yeah. the sea salt with the little piece of, like, potato skin uh, in there. I'll I fuck sleep. with them. I'll, I'll sleep on them. Um, <laughs> I don't really, I used to like McDonald's fries, but I don't really fuck with McDonald's fries like that no more. Yeah. Um... I don't think that White Castle fries is bad. Oh, hell, I think no, it's like, no. it's White, White crinkle, Castle fries like the, is trash. The, I think it's the, <laughs> the crinkleness for me. Honestly, yeah. I clearly, as you can tell, I yeah. don't give a fuck as long as yeah. it's fried. White potato. Castle is the asses fries ever. You just get the see, bitch gonna the meal. See, y'all don't, y'all don't be getting them when fries. they. <laughs> I'll let you have that one. I'll let you have that one. I'll let you have that one. But let me tell you something. I don't give a fuck. If it's a, if it's a potato and yeah. it's fried, I'm going to probably eat that. Okay, so you say you got fries, tacos. What's your third one? Um, Cupcakes. <laughs> I fuck red velvet cupcakes. Okay. Shout out to uh, my homie Heavenly Sweet. She be making some good ass cupcakes and cake. I don't give a fuck. God damn, her should be good. I'm going to order something from you just for no reason. Nobody's birthday. Gonna, I'm going to get birthday cake. Yeah, Man, her should be that good. Man, I, I revealed that cake was good as fuck, dog. I was yeah. mad as hell, it wasn't none left. Mm. So give me, your, uh, give me your top three childhood crushes. Liking people. This top three. When you, you know, childhood, though. So, a Marion, Lil Fizz, Bar oh, okay. you know the, the motherfuckers, you know. Back I used then. to really be obsessed with Romeo because I felt like nobody else was fucking with Romeo because <laughs> everybody was obsessed <laughs> with Bow Wow. Yeah. And me and Romeo had the same birthday. Hell no, you gave the benefit. And then um and I like his like speech impediment. I thought that was cute. <laughs> and um <laughs> And B2K, Jay Boog was my favorite. I thought he was so fine. I thought you were going to say Raz B because nobody like him. So, you know. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, and you got then, one more. who else? Um, I don't know. I don't... You know, you had somebody on that wall. Those the ones. No, just those two? Romeo and, and, like the and niggas Fizz. were like Backstreet Boys. Hell no, Backstreet Boys. My, I always fuck my wife because her fucking childhood crush was fucking Chingy. Oh my gosh, uh, not Chingy. She fucking Chingy heavy, dog. That's funny. Yeah. All right, give me your top three moments in life. Ooh, top three moments in life. Um, My probate for Delta. Mm -hmm. I felt like a superstar. That was my ego was very very <laughs> well fed that day. Yeah. Um, I think graduating from Howard was like super amazing because like we fucking did it. It was wild that story. This man had walked up to us. He was like, "Y'all tried cocaine yesterday." <laughs> I'm like, "Cocaine?" <laughs> so and he looked like he had did cocaine. I'm like, oh, "Okay." Yeah. And me and my homegirl, we didn't talk about it for like a full year. Yeah. We was like, "Hey, you remember so and so walked yeah. up?" Like y'all was just thinking about that shit. Damn, cocaine. Um, cocaine. Cocaine. And then now I realize a lot of more people do cocaine than I thought. Hell yeah, for real. Like, Black and white. Really be doing that yeah, for sure. Like y'all be already doing cocaine? Yeah, shit. I ain't man, fuck that. They be doing it. <laughs> like really snorting powder. Only thing I know about cocaine, my, my dad used to do it. He used to give me anything I wanted. Recipes, Dad. <laughs> like not on his birthday. Happy birthday, dog. What you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, hey, we got some good story about him, though. He know he did some crazy wild shit, he but he's a, did. he's a wild dude, man. I found out late that my mama dad had tried it. I was like, nigga, you lying? Was your heart broke? You like, oh shit, mom? Yeah, it was, but like it makes sense considering I ain't gonna do my family like that. Yeah. But like. Considering like who she was hanging with and like where they was hanging at, I'm not surprised. Oh, that's funny. Hold on, hold on. Is that like? Did, was that something your mom told you that made you get like emotional or something? Or she you... didn't tell me. My <clears throat> uncle told me. I just found out last year. My mom died yeah. two years ago. Damn. So no, what's funny is I remember when my mom and dad was on the you know saying the verge of breaking up. This shit hurt my heart though. I see her kiss this other dude. Uh, and I was that bitch ball. I like I hate your mom. <laughs> I was that bitch crying my ass off in my top bunk. <laughs> Pillow was full of water. <laughs> Bitch. I wanted my mama to have a boyfriend so bad. All that bitch cry. Like, what, what that mean? Like, yeah. I was that bitch just going ham on the. Even though I know my dad was doing dirt, dog. I'm like, dog, mom, you're not supposed to be kissing motherfucking Kali, dog. That was that nigga name, dog. He was Muslim. Oh man. I never forget that nigga. If I ever see that nigga, I want to punch him, dog. Gosh. <laughs> but that nigga, I was that bitch balling like, damn. That's crazy. My Larry was broke up, so you know, shit. Like <laughs> What's your uh, your last? Uh... <laughs> your last moment. 
I'm surprised you ain't said this one. Like, I would have thought you probably would say that. I'm going to wait to see what it is, though. My first show. I was going to say just being on the radio, being a voice of the radio. Yeah, like, yeah. My, first, my first show was probably like, okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm if, doing this shit for real. If you're willing to give me anything to talk to me, man, you know, feel free. But, you know, no pressure. Right. <laughs> I, don't got, I ain't got no music. I'm, I'll probably record some music Tuesday, though, so I might have some. Why not? Okay. It's never edited, though, so oh. I don't know. I'll tell POG to edit one song I do or something. I don't know. Well, all right, give me your uh, last thing we do. Drunk moment or hot moment? When you was one or both. And uh, there's just a funny story behind the shit. Hmm. Yeah, it might not be funny. Shit might just be you was drunk as fuck and don't remember it. Uh, I guess when I turned 21, mm-hmm. I, I woke up the next day. My lip was busted. Oh, and that. my clothes was changed. Damn, what was you drinking? Everything. Damn. Because why not? I'm Cause I, I got I got a similar story like that, but I wasn't 21, I was like 24, and my head was bleeding, and I was naked on my mama couch with her phone, and I had a phone. Hmm. <laughs> Remember that? That is very interesting. <laughs> Ass out like but apparently, <laughs> the story was, so I had, it's my 21st birthday, I knew I had drank some Hennessy. Okay. Because I like drinking Hennessy. And I think we ran into like some sigmas on the yard because my my um my birthday is in the summertime, and mm-hmm. so it's normally like right the week before everybody would come back to school. So it's during freshman week. So the only people that was really on campus like the Greeks and all the orgs that like help with freshman moving. Mm-hmm. And so um, we ran into like some random sigmas on the yard. We're like, it's my birthday. Yeah, They're like, height. oh, here, yeah. drink this. And I'm like, okay, and. Dumbass, just dumb, drinking dumbass shit. And so then I was hungry. And I think that my friends, they told me that they took me to McDonald's because it was across the street from campus. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to get out the car. Why? Yeah. Stay your ass in the car. Yeah, for sure. No, I wanted to get out. So I wanted to get out and I hit my fucking head, <laughs> like my face, on the ground. Damn. And bust my lip. So you fell. Yeah. <laughs> and Got I it. woke up, it was a note. They was like, damn. Um, one, of my, uh, one, of my, one of my favorite things was, he was like, damn, T-Mac, you was in this bitch, knock the fuck out. <laughs> nigga, watch your whole layer so you know what the fuck happened. <laughs> God damn. Happy birthday, my nigga. I hope you like, let me know when you read this. But it was so wild and crazy. Damn. I think that and then like another time I woke up in my clothes was changed again. My friends cared about me. Yeah. They cared about she me. She must have threw up on your clothes to get changed. I don't know. I guess oh, so. Yeah. <laughs> I That's guess the only so. thing I could think of. But it was like they had um changed and it was like a, a Zeta cup in my room. And yeah. I it was me and my line sister and her best friend who's a Zeta, we all lived in the same house. But we never touched each other cups. Yeah. Like we don't do that. Like, yeah. I'm not drinking out the Zeta cup. Don't drink out our Delta cups. <laughs> and um it was a blue cup in my room. I said, oh no, something happened. Yeah. Where's my phone? Couldn't find it. Yeah. So now I'm logged in to group me on, on my computer. Like, did anybody know where my phone is? Yeah. Like, it was wild and crazy. God damn. Homecoming. Homecoming was such a crazy... Damn, I never got to experience a black college Oh, homecoming. my God. It's amazing. Damn. God Where'd damn. Where'd you go? You went to Howard Homecoming? Mm-hmm. What year? Where'd y'all go? Hey, look. We ain't gonna talk about that. Oh, no. I want to know. That was many moons ago. Right, right, right. Okay. How many? A whole lot of moons. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Damn, All right, that's the one thing I. We yeah, I miss that shit though. I miss that shit, man. I can't wait till the next time come. Next time coming gonna be ridiculous. Is it age limit? No. Okay. <laughs> shit, I was like saying, the, I'm, th- the I'm 34 that and shit. Fifty years, like the fifty year alumni get acknowledged. Like yeah. they have a whole gala. Do I got know somebody to go there? No. Oh, she. I just went. You like, don't. Oh shit! I was saying, I, I, I know the protocol. Just pull it up. <laughs> like, just show up. Everybody just show up. It'd be a good damn. time. Twenty twelve homecoming was ridiculously lit. That was the year. It was like two change. Drake, Ti, Meek Mill. Damn. Everybody was I like, it was ham. pouring rain. Yeah, still and going ham. Hey, what? Bitches got trampled. It was crazy. Damn. <laughs> no damn. dead ass. Like that's why they that that was the homecoming that killed homecoming. Damn. It was a wild time. Man, hell no, that shit funny as hell. I can't. Yeah, but yeah, you brought bad memories though. Drinking four locos and just this, dumb ass yeah, shit. Yeah, and, and I drank four locos in this tequila called Three Sixty. Yep. I just remember my homies like, though you picked old girl up, kept bumping the DJ booth, and he told you to move, and you apologized to me. Like, <laughs> damn, what? And I'm looking like, though, what my fucking drawers in my car? 
Oh no, not my drawer. And like, they, I got my phone. So why the fuck do I got my mama phone? So I don't yeah. know. Maybe I was doing some dirt because I was like, I don't know shit, man. That's wild. Yeah, woke up here, I fucking scratched up, man. I'm like, damn, clothes in the basement. Like, what? Mm-hmm. I went in the basement. I threw up in my nigga weed. Sorry, weed. Though. I always say I'm sorry about that shit. Threw up in his. I told the nigga. I do remember that. I told him lay down in his window. I still threw up in the car. I missed the whole fucking window. Like, niggas just still. He like, man, I cleaned that shit up. Like, oh, man, my bad, dog. I'll give you $20. Like, something, man. I don't know. I was fucked up. That was a bad night. It was bad. Yeah, real bad. We was at, uh, what's that motherfucking shit with the, uh, outside the roof? Um, right? Vondi's in the river. Yeah, Mm. we was fucked up. Fucked up. Good times. Good times. Love those memories. Uh, Every time you get done, you be like, I ain't gonna drink no more, but you drink again. I don't think I ever said I wasn't gonna drink no more. I said that shit so many times. I'm just probably not gonna do that again. Yeah. Hell yeah. So you, you, you still drink Hennessy? That shit terrible. Mm-hmm. I tried that shit the other day. Like, man, I can't do it. Yeah. I, I graduated from that shit, I guess. I do still drink <laughs> so Um, I I prefer privilege now. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. Privilege, yeah. That's way better. Yeah, but yeah. I do still drink I fuck the Hennessy Black. Yeah. The privilege is real is real good, though. That shit's smooth. So uh, get the people. Let them know where they can find you, your socials, uh, whatever you, you want to get the people, how they can, you know what I'm saying, get a hold to you, your YouTube channel you got. Um, okay, so pretty much anywhere you want to find me, you can find me at um two times. That's the letter I, the letter M. T W O T I M E S. That means Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. I'm on air. Um, I'm on air each and every weekend. Saturdays two to six. T style Saturday happens on IG Live at four PM. Sundays, my new time is one to four. Um and what's coming? What's coming next? Uh, if you are vegan and you like vegan baked goods, hit me up on Instagram at not your aunties, all spelled properly because we're college educated. Okay? <laughs> um, and also that was the one I wasn't taking. Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much all I got going on right now that I can tell people about. Um, you know, same thing everybody else be saying. Merch coming soon. Yeah, yeah all that good stuff. Everybody said that. You know, if you want to book me to DJ a party. <laughs> no, you know the funny shit though. Niggas be saying times. like when you get kicked off America, I'll be like, this ain't the last time you gonna see me. But it's always the last time they see you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Hey, you know who she give me a vibe of though? Like Sherelle a little bit. Just a little bit. I hope she's a nice My person. Good. No, she real nice though. She got okay. a little shit go. Let's talk the show and shit. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, she, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Okay. But <laughs> so uh, we always leave people with their last sentiments, like some motivational words and wild shit. Just something you want to just leave off on the on the showers everybody podcast show. Hmm. Gotta be thoughtful. You know what I'm saying? Can't I don't. Say- I just, just say some bullshit. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, this is yours. Though. Yeah, you, that's true. That's true. You want to remember and you, you can you can come back and say something different next time. I always say it. <laughs> say we always. Say um. I don't know. It's like don't let nobody tell you you can't do no shit. Mm-hmm. And like I said, don't hate on nobody. Don't wait on nobody. If you got something you want to do, get it done. Sure. Because like I also said, if you fail, at least when you start over next time, you know some shit you ain't know last time. For sure, hell yeah. Those good words. Those good words. My shit just gonna be, man. Um, shit, if you wanna know your 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 your, your significant other body count, just ask do you know saying how many miscarriages she had. If she had some STDs, yeah. some claps, some herps. For sure. So you you made that decision on if you wanna fuck her or not. That's it. You know that's what I'm it. That's all. Like you gotta ask them <laughs> the important questions. Yeah, ask the important ask questions. Ask the important questions. Stop asking them. Ask. Don't go through phones because your feelings will get hurt. Cause you will find something that you do not like. For sure. For yeah. sure. And. If you gon' do something, cheat, fuck up in a relationship, don't say you gon' murk yourself. Keep living, nigga. <laughs> don't don't die over no chick, dog. Or chick, don't die over no dude. We living out here. Showers mm-hmm. everybody. <laughs>